listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. I'm Pete. And away we go. Pete, that's in tune on there, though, bro. Every time I, I hear it, I'm a little charged up, bro. Get a little pumped up. Get a little pumped up in here. I'm ready. Welcome back to another Getting Salty Experience podcast. It's the only podcast in the whole wide world, Mr. Shea, that brings the Firehouse Kitchen table right into your lap. As always, I'm joined by my best buddy, been friends for 40 years. There what he up? is, L- Longshoreman Louie. He's back. <laughs> hey. Thank you, pal. We found that hat. Love Lewis, him. hello, shalom. We got shalom, uh, Petey. We got my man uh, Auschwitz Pete with the new haircut. He just yeah, came on. Come, <laughs> Come, Come on, on man. man. <laughs> Pandemic Pete on the wheels of steel with his new haircut. Told me he can't wait to get back in the gym. I oh hope my so. God. Yeah, yeah. It looks I like got a high- couple, couple, couple weeks left, boys. It That's looks all. like he got a case of a high five. I don't know what happened. He lost a lot of weight. He's looking a little peaked. Oh, it's, it's the uh, it's the lighting. It's the lighting. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. There, mm-hmm. okay. yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. About two thousand calories a day. That's why he's got. Uh, <laughs> that's why he's got the heavy sweatshirt on. I don't want anybody to see what I look like. He just gets this. So cold in my dark heart, man. That's not what it soon. Is. Not soon. You'll be heading off to Florida. Nah. Well, yeah. Not yet. Got soon time. enough. Yeah. Soon enough. That time, baby. Anywho, anyhow, uh, we got a really good show tonight. We got a guy that you've been asking us for in the chat. It's. Uh, He seems like a really cool cat. First time I'm talking to him, but one of the most modest guys I've ever met in my life right here. But we're going to bring it out of him. We're going to bring the hero out of him tonight, right, (laughs) Rafi? Oh, yeah. I don't know. He might be mad at me then. He he might not talk to me ever again. I I gave him my word. You go hunting with him. He might accidentally shoot you. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what happened. Who was it that time? Cheney that shot his gun? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm taking grenades, back. man. I'm taking grenades. Oh, my God. All right, Pete, before we get caught up in it, why don't you do your thing, bro? Hit it up. All right. All thing. right. You guys all know the deal. This is our first commercial of the evening, and you know what it's for? It's for getting saltyapparel.com. That's right, where you can find the coolest firefighter apparel and accessories in the game. That would be the Leatherhead Nation t-shirt that uh, Mr. Kevin is wearing there. You got koozies, you got cups, you got shot glasses, you got everything you need. If you guys want to support us and support the show, head on over to www.gettinsaltyapparel.com. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Before we get yeah. any further, be- what's that? Oh, go ahead. Before we get any further, why don't you give us the word of the day, bud? Ah, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The word of the day is Dudley do right. salute. There he is. Dudley do right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me introduce this guy. I don't even think this guy, they already know who you are in the chat. I don't even think they uh, an introduction is needed, but anywho. It's Mr. Kevin Shay. That's Lieutenant Kevin Shea to you, sir. That's okay. it. Thank you guys Mr. for having Shea. me. Oh, no. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're a very welcome guest here. You've, you've been, uh, your name has been bantered about in the chat for some time. So uh, let's get, let's dive right into it a little bit. I got your timeline here. So, yeah. Uh, 77 graduated high school. You joined the volleys in 78. Is that where you yep. uh first meet one big fat daddy Ray in 78 volleys? That's where I met him. Yep, wow, <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> Does he do we have that picture of him anywhere, Pete? Where he was like a toothpick? We do. Oh, I got oh, it. no, oh, that's uh, fat daddy what? picture you're talking yeah, about. I'm talking about the fat daddy picture, not that picture. Oh, no, I knew he was gonna do that. Uh, where he looks like where he looks like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have that one handy. No, 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 no. that would be. I should have. You know what, Pete? That's my bad. I should have prepped the. Uh, I should have shown that one to you. That's right okay. Away. That's okay. So you joined we'll the volleys in '78. Yeah. And uh, uh, first, you went. Uh, you worked at Lilco for a little bit, huh? What were you doing? Yeah, there? I worked there uh, right out of high school. Uh, gas and electric underground, underground lines, and uh, right. I'd always wanted to be a fireman, wanted to follow my dad's footsteps. And uh, oh, that was my next question. So, dad was a fireman? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where was he? Where did he work? Uh, he worked in uh, Forty Truck. He was a cop, and then in '59 he switched to uh, wow, Forty Truck, and then uh, life begins at forty. Bronx, huh? What's that? Life camp? begins. Life begins life at forty. Begins, yeah, Naughty Forty they used to call it. Like cricket uh-huh. House, Cricket Street. It was a single house on Hancock before they moved. Right. Um, and then uh, '69 he uh, uh, got promoted lieutenant, went to Squad Two in the Bronx from Forty Truck. And I didn't know that. Squad two yeah. in the Bronx. Yeah. What were the squads like back then? I thought it was just a manpower pool. What was uh what what was it uh, that that he squad two? Was it like uh it was probably some of the best fire duty in the city, you know? Really? Squad two. How do you oh, get that? Yeah. How do you yeah. get that? He just they just sent them there or what the Yeah, it's where he went. And uh then uh they did away with the squads, you know, during I guess the fiscal crisis, right? Right. I don't know the exact year. I don't know if it was 74. Or I think those five. are the date. Yeah, 74, 75. I always remember uh, Chief Cleos yeah. always throws those numbers around for the squads. Yeah, so he got, he got lucky because um, uh, Squad 2 was in with 73 engine. Right. Uh, he was able to uh, – they had a spot in 73, so he ah, stayed in 73. So he stayed in the house. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, then he got promoted captain and uh, went to 82 engine. 80? He was there uh, six years. Uh, like I, guess, I never uh, went to any fires. Uh, no, just to say, he didn't see any fire duty, that guy, right? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, crazy. Not as much as you could see, I guess. Yeah, man. Yeah. How that, much time did he do? Uh, <laughs> he had over 30 years with his police time, but I think he only had 28 years. Um, wow. Uh, he had an accident. He had gone back to Harlem. He liked mm-hmm. Harlem and he liked a single house. So he was captain of 36 engine and uh, uh, he had an accident at a fire and uh, that was the end of his career. We only overlapped by a year and Hmm. uh, a kind of a joke between us, you know, dads want to work with their sons, sons want to work with their dads. Right. So he gets hurt in like January of 84 and he could have gone right out. He was a bad injury. Um, (laughs) So he tells me, I'm going to stay uh, until you're off probation. Well, I'm like, wow, that's great, Dad. You know, because I was going to get hires on the list. I got hired July 84. He goes back to light duty while I'm in probie school that summer to Brooklyn. And he had never worked in Brooklyn as a fireman. He, he knew the inside of my firehouse in 227 as a cop because he walked a beat on Ralph Avenue. No so, shit, man. That's yeah, freaking so that, great. He was in a 73 precinct as a cop, as a foot guy, before he became a fireman. So he knew uh, 227 had a funny layout, like the kitchen was on a half half landing, half floor. But he knew the inside from that. And then it's like, oh, my dad, you know, he's proud of me and this and that. So if you screw up, I can't get any strings pulled for you if I'm retired. I got to stick to your <laughs> <laughs> That's his vote of confidence. <laughs> Don't screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> so did you, did you ever get to work with him or no? Well, he was on light duty, but we did get to commute uh, a couple of times. That's so cool. he did light duty in the 15th division. Right. And, uh, uh, so he would drop me off um, at the firehouse. At right. Um, I was already out at 239 at the time. And uh, yeah, we would commute together. He could come in and have coffee at the firehouse. That's it, cool. It wasn't what I would have wanted, but it was. It was yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, That's great. It was something. It was something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I always say it to the guys. I, I didn't get a chance to do that because my dad passed away. I took the test with Roofy, but I'm I didn't do, as, I I didn't do as well. And uh, he got on, Louis got on, and then I had to take the test again. And actually, Roofy took yeah. me. Remember, you took me for the test? I he did. drove me down there. And I got 100. On the physical, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I got to share it with my brothers, but I never got to share it with my dad. I would have liked to have shared it with him. Your dad was a fireman, Kevin? My dad was a fireman, and my uh, my two brothers were firemen, too. Yeah. So I got to share it with them. I didn't get to share it with my – and I got to actually work with my brother. So that's – Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. yeah so you get, promo- you get assigned to 239 out of Proby School, right? Single engine. Pete, yeah. pull, uh, pull that one up, that picture I sent, which is pretty cool because 239 has, still has the original Brooklyn Fire Department on it. Oh, yeah, wow, look at that. yeah, look at that. Really cool, man. Yeah, two thirty. They saw the thirty nine on there, which you know we explained in the past, right, Ruffy? They added a hundred, and then yeah, they added a hundred. Yeah, right. So it was it became two for the engines, right? And one for the trucks. Was that how it went? Yeah, it was fifty. It was fifty 
for the for the trucks, and then it was a hundred, and then a hundred. They did it two times for the engine. Okay. Right. So I mean, that looks fairly new, though. Was it? Was it? An, it's an old. It must be an old firehouse, though. No, that was old building. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it? Did it look old inside? Did it uh, yeah. have the had yeah. the wooden lockers? Like. Uh, yeah. Cool. So why why did you only spend a short time in two thirty nine? What, what was that all about? Uh, up. Oh, he's uh, smiling. It's got to be a good story. <laughs> he's smiling. Uh, <laughs> well, I was gonna, I was going to ask him why why didn't your old man like he spent his whole time in in Harlem and uh, up in the Bronx? How come you didn't go go that good route? Question, Murphy, good question. Why'd you wind up in the in Brooklyn instead of Harlem? I gotta be careful what I say. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh come on. Well, first of all, he said, uh, you can't go where I went. You got to make a name for yourself, go to bed. He I like, said, that. I like, like that. He says, a lot of guys don't like me. You know, you're not riding my coattails. You're not fighting my battles. So you ain't coming to Harlem and you ain't coming to the Bronx. Uh -oh, you know, wow. After you're hired, go where you want. But wow. he said, so you're going to go to Brooklyn. And I wanted it. I wanted to go to Brooklyn. He said, Brooklyn's great. They got fires. It's like the Bronx without a toll. That's all it's <laughs> <laughs> The entertainment tax. <laughs> yeah. So when I got to, um, we make mistakes, right? We're young. Yeah. Uh, you don't know any better. So I got to 239. Wonderful people, wonderful guys. And I was just hot up to go to as many fires as I could. And they just weren't going to fires. Right. What a good career. And, and I didn't come here to socialize. I came to go to fires, you know. Well, right. not knowing that it's not exactly, you know, the nicest thing to do to the place you're assigned to. It's, uh, it's a spicy so, meatball for sure. You know, how do you get around it? You know, especially yeah. on probation, right? Well, because you're a dumbass and you're probably, <laughs> you don't give a shit. You don't realize you're going to make a fool of yourself and insult somebody else. So you don't care. So, you know, my dad had tried to pull some strings and get me to a busier place. And some were going through hooks in the union at the time. Some were going through hooks through the Chiefs they knew, and my dad pulled the wrong hook. And I got to 239, which is – it sounds like you're insulting the company. you got to remember I was a kid. I didn't know any better, and, and they were wonderful men. And uh, it was a slow house. Um, and so <laughs> back in the day, probation was six months, right? So when we got hired, probation was a year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my dad says, hey, I, I want the kid to go somewhere else to pull some strings. Well, he's got to wait till he's off probation. Well, one of the regs, one of the old regs, it didn't change to a year. It still said six months. Ah, the old like, loophole. Nice. Yeah, oh. like, Fuck it. Six months is up. Get rid of it. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. January. And if you look at those those companies, you see how many I was in for such a short career I had. It really looks like a drug or alcohol problem. Probably. <laughs> 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 Nobody yeah. like that on purpose. Kev, you know what? That's not that's not true. We've had guys on here that you know it just they're just like spent a year or two, three, maybe three, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and they just Andy keep Potter. Yeah. Potter was going all over the place, yeah, you're man. Just following, chasing the fire. Some guys right? were just chasing fire, man. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, you I, know, I, I loved every place I worked. Everybody was good. So you, you went to two two seven. Where? Uh, who were they with? Was it a single engine two. Single, was engine. That? A single engine back in the day, long before I was hired. One twenty three truck was there. And when my dad would would coop there when he was a cop, uh, the truck was still there. So the truck was gone. Uh, you know, of course, one uh, one twenty three is in different quarters. Um, it was a single engine, and the battalion then was um, Watkins Street and the Tin House. So. I had uh, 232 and 176 and 231, 120. That was the battalion. So we were the you, you single. You used to, to fire there. That's great, that man. Yeah, right that, was there, bro. Great. that was right in the shit. Yeah, man. So uh, how long before they yelled at you, you had to run to the rig? Before <laughs> <laughs> I did Five some minutes. stupid stuff there, boy. Yeah. yeah. But you're just so passionate. You just want to go to fires and help so much, you know? Yeah. Uh, all you do is get in the way. <laughs> what cool. well, were some of the guys there, uh, Kev, that you remember that uh, put you on the path? Oh, well, a uh, fellow passed away that I, I was fond of. His name was Tommy Lodicina, and they called him Mad Dog. And um, uh, he, he since has passed. Uh, oh, there were so many guys there. I was fond of Kevin McCabe. Um, Eddie Curley worked there. Uh, oh, Eddie, Eddie Curley, Curley, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big yeah. hands. 
Yeah. You know what they say about guys with big hands? <laughs> big gloves. <laughs> big gloves. <laughs> yeah, well, he, uh, we had some fun there. I forgot he was uh, there. That's right. And he was there. I had my my um, the captain that meant the most to me in my career in the fire department was Eddie Higgins, the captain there. And uh, one thing that I like about this podcast you guys invited me to, because um, this was making me uncomfortable, you know, before I said, okay. So it made me reach out to some guys uh, somewhere between asking if it was a good idea and asking permission. <laughs> right, um, right. Like that senior guy stuff means mm -hmm. a lot to me to this day. And uh, so you got me in touch. Um, I hadn't spoke to Joey Higgins and I don't nice. know how long. Um, I worked with his brother, Michael. I didn't work with Joey, but we ran in together a lot. And I, you know, we knew each other pretty well. And I asked Joey, uh, and I spoke to him today, would it be okay if I spoke about his dad? Because I didn't want to uh, talk about somebody like that unless I ask him or a family member. And Joey's like, no, no, go ahead. So um, Eddie Higgins meant the world to me. And uh, if I get off base, you know. No, nah, dude, run with nah, it, man. Okay. Wherever you're going, yeah. we're going. Wherever you're you, going, we're going. Oh, uh, about you. So, uh, no, it ain't about me. Uh, uh, there he I is. There's a modest guy. Was, I was an observer. I watched a lot of great guys, but I was just watching them. And uh, Eddie Higgins, he was what a captain should be, you know. Um, I was new. I just transferred in, uh, left 239. I don't think the captain there was thrilled that I left. And, you know, they were telling me when I had to take my vacation and paperwork was following me from 239. Captain Higgins, he just says, and my wife was pregnant with my, with my uh, second child. You know, I, I was young, but I had a family young. And, um, you know, all this paperwork comes, he says, yeah, come to the office. I go to the office. He says, oh, you, you darling bride. She's, uh, she's expecting. I'm like, yeah. He says, well, I got this stuff about a mutual you owe and uh, when you go on vacation. He says, you're my guy. You go on vacation when I tell you. You stay home when she gets the word on the baby and your vacation starts that wow. day. Now, I know that's the way it was back in the old days. And uh, uh, when I was a little kid, uh, my mom uh, had cancer, had a bout with cancer. She survived. And when my dad was in 40 truck, for the longest time, he didn't go to work. We had uh, wives from uh, other mm. guys' wives coming and bringing food, you know. Yeah, where you going, man? I'm the I'm the oldest, right? I'm in like uh, I don't know, first grade or something, second grade. I got two younger sisters, and they're bringing food to the house, everything. When he went back to work, it wasn't like today, you know. Back in the day, you're sick, you, you hit or miss if she's going to make it, and you know, young family. Mm. They took such good care of us that he was gone for like couple of months and there was no you know uh, the the medical office didn't have the programs they have today for that right like right so, right right the, the counseling like unit that. right you all like that stuff. and you know what right. I mean? it was so he goes back to work guys took care of it they wouldn't even tell him who worked for him right the when guys say, took care of it that's the brotherhood say, right there bro that that's the leatherhead nation right there at yes work. well those days were changing and you know now of course it's over computer and all but they were already changing, but it was handwritten still. You know, neutrals, you owe business. Higgins, for every pencil, he had two erasers. He wrote down what he wanted. <laughs> he was just, hey, this is the way it is. And the guy was so morally straight in that area on how to work with men and how to behave. Right. Dude, that was just a breath of fresh air. I, I don't hold – I try not to. I did for a while. It was a mistake. I try not to hold officers – uh, to that standard, no, right, right. it's tough. They can't get away with it. They might want to do the right thing. They can't. Right, it's tough. It mm -hmm. is tough. It's a fine line. You want to make the guys happy, and you want to do the right thing, and 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 go above yeah. and beyond to help somebody like that. <clears throat> but there's only so much, like you said, the further it's gotten along, there's only so much you can do. Yes, personally. But now you can refer people, like the counseling unit, like you were saying. There's a lot of pro programs now that help guys. Or if they're, they're picking up the slack for what the captain correct and it's can't. Correct. Do. You know, right. We still do. The guys still do a great job. It's still there, bro. I have, yeah. And the fire department really do a great job with oh, whatever you have, whatever the best your issue in is. The world. Right? And they're going to behave. They're going to get it done, whatever loophole they got to use. Right, 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 right. Like the flavor changes, but it's still the same mentality. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, man. You know? um, yeah, man. And Captain Higgins, 
If I'm talking too much, I'm supposed ah, to. Dude, do it. All right. Um, so <clears throat> one thing I liked about Captain Higgins, and I still do, uh, I still teach. I do some training for rescue stuff. Man, I was back to basics and, you know, throwing 10 pounds against the wall. You hope five pounds sticks like you study for ten or whatever you do. And at one point, right when I got there, uh, 227 had, I believe, eight guys that were not first grade at once. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot of guys. We had a couple transferred in and a couple on probation at the same time. I was a probie with um, – Joey Downey was a probie with me. Uh, Mike wow. Gallagher, a couple others were probies. Was uh, uh, Lee Ielpi there when you were there? No, he, he was in rescue two at the time. Okay. Uh, Lee Ielpi and Marty McTeague were two guys that went right from, I believe, 227 to rescue two. Not many guys going from an engine to a rescue like that, man. So no. that says a lot about 227, right? Yeah. Oh, I was very proud of that place. Yeah, man. What Higgins did for a while, I don't remember how long, you know. And if I tell you a story, remember, it's only what I remember. The other guys might tell you right, different. Right, right, right. I remember the best drill in the world. Higgins, like somebody would say to him, Hey, you worried about all these new guys at once? He's like, ah, I got it. I got it. You know? So you get a lot of false alarms, ERS boxes and what have you. But you, the phone alarm with an address was still a false alarm, but not as common, right? Mm -hmm. Every phone alarm with an address, we stretched, period. Really? Had, yeah, you had enough new guys. Oh, you're stretching the phone alarms tonight. You're stretching all over the place, dry line, you know? This went on not for too long. went on for a while. Man, you got good at your stretch. You got good at your stretches. Yeah. And again, like that young idiot that left 239 too soon, I'm in 227. And what do you think? And I'm like you, Kevin, a utility worker before I was a fireman. So you're kind of like a grown man, but you're a kid at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you're in the fire department. So what do you think? Well, there's the truck. I want to be like those guys. But they're laughing at me. You know, they weren't laughing. And that's when you realize, like, because you, you're stretching to obvious false alarms. Yeah. Guys were just like, that's 227. That's Higgins breaking his guys in. Wow, that's great. And as time went by, you felt felt proud of that, you know. Yeah. But what was the answer to training? Just keep doing it. Yeah. Basic. That the best drill, you know. Right. Yeah. It's all basic, basic stuff. It's nothing, yes. you know, no blackboard, just taking no. hose off the, line, off the rig and doing it over and over again. And over I'm sure and you over. were going through yeah. those calls, you know, every 24. Those what's, what, what's the bread and butter of, of engine work? Stretching lines, man. Right? I mean, yeah. 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 And and today I I uh um I have to watch sometimes and, and rein things in that I know what worked at the time, but I don't know what's going on with everybody. And when they say like the new guys compared to the old guys, the new guys are a lot smarter and a lot stronger than I ever was. This is Every decade, the probies are, are better and have the capacity to be better than I was. That's just life moves forward. That's something to embrace and be happy about, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes, like, uh, do some classes for Elkhart Brass, and they do something called Know Your Flow. And it's good. I didn't know. I mean, when we tested a length of hose, it, it burst or it didn't, right? I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. You hooked it up on a Saturday. You were pissed off that you were there. Yeah, you pissed off. You had to do it. Yeah. You had to get into all this, how much water's flowing. Right, right, right. Dude, I can't do it. I ain't that smart. You know, and, it, and this is not like an exaggeration or being funny. I ain't that smart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I took a career. I break shit and leave without, without cleaning up before I leave. That's I can't right. really fix anything. That's right. Nobody else pays you just break shit and walk out the door. I didn't think you did a great job. Right? <laughs> right. So I do not know all these numbers, but what I get concerned about is the more they know about what the nozzle's flowing and there's something called nozzle forward or line forward or something that they don't understand that even if I don't have the optimum pressure, I don't have this or have that. If I'm at the seat of the fire, I could teach a monkey to put the fire out. If I could get him there, you know what I mean? And I think sometimes some of that stretching and everything is pre-connect when I travel to, around the country. And, you know, it's very convenient. 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm sure the pre-connect is adequate, you know. But I, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. I feel like it's one of the skill sets we might have let go, you know. Mm. Well, I feel better when the guys practice their stretching.
You know what it is, Kevin, too? Guys have talked about that on the show here. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. know. You know, every, you know, everybody knows the flows. They know this. They know that. They know they got to put their mask on. You know, all this stuff as opposed to just putting Doing the fire it. out. Just <laughs> oh, put yeah. the fire out. I mean, it's really, like you said, you know, yeah. back in the day, guys, when they you know, came out of the war, the toughest men of men, right? No yeah. masks. Just put the fire out. There is something to be said about that. Now, granted, there are we've moved along, like you said, and the issue is, and, and, and again, we've talked about that, is just not enough work, right? So yes, they go back into this, uh, you know, analysis it, of it. It's also not their fault, Lewis. Like I, I could never say, but oh, he's not the fireman that three generations when my dad was there better. I, I mean, it's like saying, hey, I'm really proud. I live in in like a third world country has fires all the time. The fuck, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. why are we going to fires all the time? It's fun, but it's not their fault that they don't have the fires. Right, right. Right. It's not what we were or the people before me were. That would be unfair, you know, to say. But yeah, well, it's, it's we're not trying to juggle that with these guys for them to stay motivated and to drill because when you do get the fires and you still have to be ready, yes, and, you know, you could practice and practice and practice, but the bottom line, when it's time to go, it's time to go. Right, you only get that one that's chance. And you have to be yes. ready that's to go. The only reason we're there, you know. Right, yeah. and that doesn't we're, always we're happen. Gonna, <clears throat> I don't know that we're ever going to have that time where you go into three, four, five fires a night. It's just you know, I don't think that's ever going to come back again. No, it's just, no, no. You know, those mind. days were very rare for me. That was more like my dad's period. Right, I did have yeah. four fire nights, but I didn't have a lot of them. You know, I'd run right. two fire nights with pretty much the norm for good jobs in the night. It happened, but that right. was already starting to tail off. Yeah, it was tailing off. Yeah. It was, even when we got to the squad in 98, right? Lou, it wasn't uncommon to go to three, four, five fires in a night. I mean, you didn't work at them all, but right. uh, you, you would go into three, four, five. Oh, fires we were covering night. 20 companies, right? right. So that's, not, that's, not a regular, that's not a regular company, a first due company, right? But you know, you know, I, I mean, like the rescues would do it but still the squads, but it would, uh, I mean, like the engine or truck. Yeah, yeah, just one company. Anymore. No, yeah, those days of, you know, 76, yeah. 77. And when you talk about 227's area, square oh wise, God. right? Yeah. You could probably name every box you had, like the chauffeur there, I'm sure he knows every <laughs> box. You know, it's uh, maybe yeah. it's 100 boxes, you know, because Brooklyn was on top of each other. So when you think about yes. the fact that you were going to four fires, three fires in that little area, first oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. When you think about the borough as a whole, how big it is, you know. Yeah. I think Brooklyn's like the eighth largest city in the country, for God's sakes, you know. Yes. Quote unquote. Yeah. So, we have guys on here, like we had Hank on, right? And we say, well, how long did it take before you went to your first job? He's like, yeah, my first night tour, I went to like three jobs. Two hours. You know? yeah, two hours. <laughs> Two hours, you know, guys are going to jump. Those days are over. So, you know, the, so, that's yeah. that's where the training becomes yeah, really yeah. necessary, you know, like yeah. muscle memory, a stretching a line like that all the time. So when it does happen, you guys are ready. You know? Yes. Hey, Kev, I had, I know a, I had a, a mentor once tell me it's not the stuff that you don't know that'll get you. It's the stuff that you do know that'll get you. Mm. So that's right. why you got to keep training it over and over. But I don't execute. know if that applies to firefighting, but. Sure. You can know everything in the book, but you still have to execute when it comes about. Yep. I can tell you, I never met uh, Captain Higgins, but I can tell you this. He was definitely a Dudley Do-Right. Whoa! Cheers, boys. I oh. slipped that one in there. I slipped that one in no, there. He, he had, <laughs> oh, he, the Captain Higgins had four, those were four sons, correct? He had four sons? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was Joey I was talking to today. So. I mean, he was in 290, oh, right? Uh, uh, Bobby, I believe. Oh, Bobby. Right. Timmy was rescued, too. He passed on 9-11. Right. And um, it was uh, Eddie that broke me in. Or should I should say Captain Higgins that broke me in the engine. And um, his son, Michael, was one of the guys that broke me in instrumental and breaking me in in the truck. Uh, Mike worked with Ray and, you know, the 108 crew. Oh, Fat right. Daddy. He's in there. Fat Daddy's in the chat tonight. Good, and he's good thirsty. Man. Fat Daddy says he's thirsty. I already hit it. I already saw it. I, I hit know. It. And I got to talk to Ray tonight, which was great. Yeah. Oh, it's um, somebody's <laughs> asking if uh, Kevin worked with uh, Marino Gabri Gabrielli in 227. Well, yeah, Gabe. Yes. Yeah, yes, Domin Dominic Gabrielli is asking. I worked with Gabe, Marino Gabrielli. Nice. 
Nice. Dominic, I, don't know, I don't know if did Dominic he, is did, his son did he make a good chicken palm? Oh, me, you. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't eating back then, Coops. Come on. Uh, we we had a jobs. job in a um, uh, auto wrecking place. They would just bring the wrecks in to strip the cars. So anytime something was wrong with your car, you tell them ahead of time. He brought an old part in, and we were always swinging wrenches in the fry house. So nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. Isn't that funny? I had a guy like that too, dude. If you had any problem with your car, oh yeah, shit, I can't remember his name. That Mike something up in two ten. You br- he would get the part and put it, bring the car into into the bay, and he would just change the brakes, change oh, yeah. whatever it was, man. It's, it's yeah. that fun. It's a brotherhood, right? Those are such good times. Oh, yeah, man, wonderful. Yeah. All right, so let's fast forward here a little bit. So, how long did you spend in two two seven before you said, "Aha, I want to go to the truck. I want to go uh, to the truck." About two years. Two or years. Guess, uh, less. I, uh, October um, October of 86, I went to 108. So you pick 108. Why 108? Well, uh, you want to do what's in front of you, and I right. wanted to stay in my battalion. And I couldn't get into 120 or uh, on 176. I had too long a waiting list. And my friend Ray said, put in for 108. Oh, fat daddy and, uh, Ray. Hey. Openings, and I did. And uh, <laughs> some guys didn't realize they were annoyed that I got there and I wasn't first grade when I got to 108. But they didn't realize that every January, is it, your paper is out. You have to resubmit your paper. Mm-hmm. But they just never did it. Some oh, really? Guys, so they, they they went, no shit. <laughs> uh, like I said, man, I was hungry. I'm like, well, if you don't want bad enough to fill out the freaking paper, I, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Again, not very popular, but mm-hmm. <laughs> how bad do you want it, right? Mm-hmm. No doubt about that. So who so, was who, who was over there in 108 besides Ray? That, uh, oh, Jerry Tracy was there? Yes, Jerry Tracy was there. Uh, two guys I really looked up to were um, uh, Tom D'Agostino and Joe Mari, they were quite the Irons team. Um, and so uh, I think you mentioned Danny Murphy. Yeah. Uh, great guy, Danny yeah. Murphy. Uh, oh, there were so many guys there. Jimmy Marchetti and Michael Higgins and Ray. and uh, just so many. Um, a lot of guys funny. came out of there, man. Holy mackerel. Oh, yeah, right. out of there. Yeah. Harry Ford. Harry Ford. Ray. Harry Ford. Yeah, his son is there now, actually. Is he real? Yep, yep, yep. I see him. I used to see him in the gym all the time. And there's and there's actually his wife is uh she's a politician now, so I talk to her all the time. But the son is in 108 now. At the gym all the time. Harry was a strong man. Yeah, Harry. man. His son's a big dude, man. His son's a really yeah. big dude. Harry was wild. <laughs> um, oh, there were so many guys there. Terry Coyle went to rescue two. Danny went to rescue two. Mickey McDonald went to rescue two. I went to one. Harry went to rescue four. Um yeah, we all worked together. Yeah. Ooh, that was ooh. like the, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Ray squad. Yeah, they, they were wonderful memories. And that that company drilled Michael Higgins. He was special to me because, um, you know, uh, some things are just the same wherever you go. Guys are roughly the same age group, you know, uh, mm-hmm. same stage in life. Uh, younger guys with wives and kids and. Second jobs, you couldn't make ends meet when you first. I mean, it was a huge cut in pay. You would know, Kevin, to leave <laughs> Billy Cut and become a fireman. My pay. Cut. Holy mackerel! Yeah, man, I took. A- I had a wife and one kid and one on yeah. the way. Big, big hit. I was working for Con Ed, making sixty-eight, seventy thousand. I went to making twenty-two thousand a year as a fireman. Yeah. 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 I know. So we all worked part-time jobs, right? Yeah. So you'd be tired. You go to the firehouse. You're tired. But you never say, hey, this is not a part-time job. This is my career. And it was my passion. It was more important than anything I did on the side. But sometimes it's human nature. You can't help it. You're tired. Man, yeah. Mike was having none of that, man. There are guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I so, so appreciate uh, that. Um, and Pete brought something up. He said about uh, the things that know that will get you. Uh, I'll, yeah. It's okay. I'll talk it's- about that later. That. Yeah. bombing and about the constant drilling that's uh that roof rope thing that was all michael higgins for me that's why that worked out okay mm. so wow. anything i did i owed to somebody else i didn't do it you know yeah yeah i want to ask you something kev like um <laughs> when um 
when you were a kid and your dad was a fireman, I'm sure you went to the Christmas parties. Oh yeah, and all, all that other stuff, right? Like all when I, I think about it now. Like and <clears throat> when I was a kid, everything, the senses, the smell of the firehouse, the oh, yeah. feel of the firehouse, you know. Like it, it just captures you as a kid and it makes you want to be a fireman when you get older, right? The whole feel of being of the firehouse just draws you in and makes you want to become a fireman, right? You you grow up in that whole atmosphere, right? That like smell of the diesel fuel and the smoke <laughs> on the gear. And- <laughs> yeah, man. Every oh, hazardous man. materials you can imagine. <laughs> exactly. I wish you guys would bottle that as a perfect That's it, right? <laughs> cologne. Oh, the canal. I would wear it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there's something about that. Even, even when you're a kid, you don't even realize it, you know? Like the brotherhood, I, you know, I, I can see it now, and I can refer back to it when I was a kid. But back then, you don't know. But you see it now, and you're like, holy shit, man. It was incredible, you know, like yeah. the brotherhood. And, and it's it's it, it's another family, right? I, I I learned it when I went to work for the lighting company, and that was a good job. And uh, it was an excellent job. And it was good men, and, and the work was good. It was hard. It was actually very hard, but it was good. But they did not have that kind of brotherhood, like, no. at all. And, you know, yeah, it's it's not the same. Uh, you just can't. It's not it's not the same atmosphere. Yep. Um, Kev, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a quick question. You said you spoke. You called up. Uh, who did you call up today? Uh, Mike okay, Higgins. Uh, Joey Higgins. Joey Higgins. Eddie's, I, I, um, Captain Higgins has passed away. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he, I didn't call, oh, we're ass, he didn't say you were assholes, did he? <laughs> 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 don't call our podcast. Those guys are assholes. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. Um, but I, I saw, even, even when I first called you, right, when, when I talked to guys, uh, when I first start the process of getting guys, the thing that I, that I talk about the most is that you can talk to somebody that you haven't talked to in 20 years, 30 what? years. And within ten seconds, it's as as time as there's no no time has gone by, right? You, it's like you were hanging out with him yesterday, right? There's no awkwardness. Nope. You cannot do that. I can't do that even with people from from high school or college, no. or no. you know, that, no. it just doesn't exist. I'm sure military guys have the same type of feeling that they, they can do. call. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Right. So there's only a few professions right. that you get this. You know, oh, where I, I, it, yeah, it doesn't matter I, how long, how much time goes by. I just told the story on the last podcast, bro. Like when my kids were having this party and I recognized one of the names. I wanted all the kids' parents to call okay. me. <laughs> yeah. I wanted the kids' parents to call me to make sure they knew their kids were coming over and they were drinking at my house. So one guy calls, uh, sends me a text, uh, Anthony Tequato. My son, it's okay for him to come over. I'm like, Anthony Tequato, that sounds familiar. I send him a text. Hey, <laughs> were you on the fire department by any chance? Right, he sends me a text back. Yeah, I got on in uh, October. Blah blah blah. I was in your class, you fucking ball bag. I was talking to a guy in twenty-seven years, and he's like, "I was in your class, you ball bag." Right, that's what we said. Right, you talked to him yesterday, right? Yeah. Best part, it really is the best part. It's you can't you can't even fake it. There's no faking it either. No, I wish I could tell people, um, uh, especially. Well, uh, say we had some cops that came, switched over, mm-hmm. and um, they were not treated well in the PD. So a couple came with a small chip on their shoulder, not for long, just at first. The city, this, the city, that. I'm like, hey, man, it's like the city, it's the fire department, you know. I guess I, I supposedly work for the city, but I don't work for the city. Like you, Kevin, I wasn't going to quit to be a bus driver. I worked for the fire department or I wouldn't be here, you know? Mm-hmm. And what it, it took some guys to learn, and I wish I could teach this to new people that are interested in the fire department. I, 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 I never gave so much to any job or organization of myself was important to me. And nobody ever gave me more back than I gave to them in the fire department. Absolutely, hands down, you know? Yeah. I get so much more back from it than I give, you know, and I don't know how to explain it. You just have to experience it for a while. You know, Yeah, that's why this thing works. This podcast yeah. works because it's a very it's very hard to describe. Uh, like when I say the Leatherhead Nation, you know, it's very hard to describe this bond that guys have with one another, you know, like. Yeah. 
it, it's just it's really hard to describe with that. Like I, I was uh, some guy reached out to me the other day uh, from when I was a probie in two ten. Uh, he's like, uh, is this Kevin? I work with a guy named Kevin Kubler in, in Brooklyn. Is it you? I'm like, well, who am I talking to? Because he's got a, a different name. Yeah, yeah. And you know, after 27 years, you know, the feelings that are brought back, I'm like, holy shit, it was a guy named Buddy. I'm like, holy shit, Buddy. You know, like I haven't talked to him, like you just said, Ruffy, in 27 years. And we were chatting it up like we just talked yesterday, you know. Yeah. That's hard to that's hard to describe to anybody. You know, it's very yeah, yeah. It, they don't understand it. Yeah, no, they don't. And and it doesn't end. I'm retired a long time. I, I my career was cut short and I, I miss it terribly. But you're still stuck sometimes in that mindset. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I was very lucky. I had uh, one of the senior guys I looked up to, Joe Mari. Um, I'm very fond of Joe. Uh, but he had enough of an age difference that, that I really respected him. Like that was going to be my mentor. One of the guys I latched on to him, Tom D'Agostino. And uh, I was blessed. Joe was able to come out. And his, his wife's a doll, Joyce, Joyce Mari was able to come out and visit us, stay for a couple of days and look around Glacier Park. And I was wow. teaching for a training company, you know, but I didn't have the confidence to do my own thing. It just, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Indian, not a chief, you know? So uh, I, I did it one time, I ran it by him, I asked him, and it's kind of funny, like you asked him for his advice. You asked <laughs> him for, guy for his commission. If he had told me it wasn't a good idea, I wouldn't have done it. I got his blessing to start my own training company, and then I did it. Well, I wouldn't have done it, and I've been doing it, you know. Yeah, that's funny, man. Yeah. But that's how important that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Man, I, it's a very, it's a father figure. There's no yeah. doubt about it. That, that, that he was like too young for that, but like older brother. But yeah, 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 absolutely. yeah. yeah absolutely. You, you really want to be, and then what happens is, what, what, what even in 117, I had some some older guys there. Frankie McCartan was one of the guys. Didn't say much. Yeah. But every time, uh, you know, I always wanted to make sure that I was impressing him. You know what I mean? Oh, you're like and a puppy dog. You want his approval. Yeah, yeah. You're jumping in place. You know, how'd I do? What do you think? You know, his, his like he said, he, his, he didn't talk much. But when he talked to you, I would listen to every word he said. And, yeah. Uh, but uh, you definitely have those father figures. And maybe some houses don't have those older guys now so much. Yeah. And that, that, that. Is where, like you said, you you look at to more of a younger guy, more of a brother type uh, figure, but still there. You just need to, you want that to, to somebody to look up to you. And to, you to need look to, up to you. step up and be that guy, you know. Well, when yeah. it's your turn, then you have to do that, right? Yes, yes, you do. Yep, yes, you do. Yeah. I know. I know. Ruffy makes fun of me all the time, but uh, I talk to Hank Malay three, four, five times a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there he goes. I knew it could be any. <laughs> and it took the, <laughs> I've, I've never done about, that before. And it's about anything and everything, no matter what it is. I could yeah. talk to him, you know, and ask him his advice on it, whatever it is. And, yes. Uh, yeah. It's just it's wonderful to have that relationship with somebody that you trust. Oh, yeah. All these years, that's a lot of, I mean, Hank was the guy. When we got there, he yeah. was, you know, he, he, nobody knew more than he did, you know, for yeah. us. And, How long ago uh, was that? When did we get there? 98. Yeah, 20-something 20, years ago. And I'm still calling a guy, you know? So that's good. Oh, I'm old, but that's about it. He's older uh, than dirt. He's definitely older than dirt, no doubt. He's in there tonight, I think. Yep. So, well, how long are you staying 108 before you said, aha, I want to go to the one? Aha. And speaking of 108, by the way, look who that is in the middle. Oh, that's oh, Fat Daddy. Fat Daddy right in the middle. Fattest wow. of the daddies. Look at that. <laughs> who are those guys, Kev? That's uh, Tommy Westman. Um, Lieutenant Eddie Phillips, uh, Ray, uh, Jimmy Marchetti, Warren Ward behind him, and then me. Yeah. Uh, wow. Look at that mop of hair you got on your I was going to say, you still got the do, man. Nice. He still has the do. It's good. <laughs> yep. So you guys said that you'd like some funny stories sometimes? Mm -hmm. Sure. All the time. <laughs> Warren Ward, great guy. And didn't wasn't a big ball breaker, just a really nice man. So I just got there. This, this, this picture's on there a couple of years. When I first got there. I wasn't a first grade fireman yet. And I uh, uh, just came from 227 and in the truck. And it might have been that one. You guys refer to it as the phone booth, but you know where yep. the man rode, right? 
Dude, I was so over my head. I was so overwhelmed. I just wanted to go fires. I had no clue what I was doing outside the engine. <laughs> so, of course, you're the can guy, right? So we get a job. I don't remember where it was. And Greg Smith was was working with me. And I think Greg had the irons. And uh, I had the can. And Greg might have been, I don't know if he was still in the engine and detailed. or I don't remember. I just knew I was new there and I had the can. And... Uh, <laughs> Fire blowing up the windows, whatever. We pull up, yada, yada, all excited, right? Like a moth to a flame. Boom, I'm gone, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I go, and you got to remember, like, in the engine, all you had to do was stay on the line and just move and blow it. Go, 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 right? <laughs> in the truck, they actually expect you to remember shit. And I'm in this phone booth, and it looks like a cool place to ride. It's not. You got your hands out. So You're hanging on for your dear life. Hold the side. Uh, you couldn't fit in it with your with your mask on your back. So I got the mask and I got the can sitting, you know, there. I uh, got my helmet behind it. I got my hook stuck in the in the side, right? <laughs> That's four things you want me to remember. Dude, we're getting four. I'll give you three. I can't guarantee which three out of the four you you're going to get. You only get three. That's that's it. That's what you're going to get, right? I take off like in the engine, you know. I forgot my helmet. <laughs> so, luckily, That's been done. I, because, uh, and Ray said to me on the phone today, he says, I wondered why you always wore a sweatshirt with a hood. I always had a sweatshirt with a hood. I think maybe that picture before shows a sweatshirt with a hood. So, the gear didn't come in as many different sizes as today. I never had the bunker gear. This stuff is fantastic today. I just had my old coat, right? And then I grab a volley coat for a spare. And I'm long and skinny. So to get, I don't want to burn, you know, where you get burned. You, you, if not your knees, your wrists and what have you, right? So you got the coat's got to be long enough. Or to get the coat long enough, it's too big on me. A big coat, right. So she's going down the back of my neck. I burnt my back of my neck a couple of times, like everybody. But I was getting it more. Every time I go down the engine, stuff's going down the back of my coat. I've been like this and my collar's way out. So you just get one of them uh, sweatshirt with the hood. The hood would bunch up there, and you could just pull the hood out, and the embers would go out the back, right? So I'm wearing my coat, like always, and uh, I got my I got my can, and uh, the engine isn't ready yet, and we're holding in with the can. The engines take a little bit long. Sometimes it took longer than others, right? Get burned a little bit. Not burn, burn, just sunburn, whatever, a little bit hot. And I got my hood up over my head because I don't have my freaking helmet like an idiot, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, comes, you know, goes. Everybody's bumping in each other and bumping and trying to get closer. And I want to use the last few ounces from my can. But by the way, another hint with the can when you're in the situation, after you use up the can and it's empty, throw it as far as you can into the fire. After the job, yeah, man, that's where I was. Yeah. <laughs> well, I that anyway. so, I where were you? Up. That's what where I was. Well, so they, they grabbed me by the back of the head. You're the man. You're the kind of guy we need. Whatever. <laughs> he thinks I lost my helmet. And I just hung tough getting burned. I'm like, yeah, yeah, thanks. Boom. I run as fast as I can in the chaos out to the rig. I'm like, oh, my God. I hope nobody sees me. I grab my helmet. All there is is a grin from Warren Ward. He said, <laughs> don't worry. I won't say anything. <laughs> I won't say anything. <laughs> never did. You never said anything? Never used don't it. Worry. That's amazing. Wow. That's man. a little man right there, bro. So yeah, that's all no way he didn't say nothing. I can't believe it. All perspective, like, wow, what a great guy. No, the dude forgot his freaking helmet. He's an idiot. Well, I think every you know, all depends who saw you, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I've, we've all done. I actually, I used to start wearing a baseball. I had a baseball cap. Yeah. And we had a job, and I got off the rig, but you know, I felt something on my head. So yeah. I just, again, it was happening fast. I was probably excited. And next yes. thing I know, I'm in there, and I go to put my face piece on. I realize I have my baseball cap on. So I just, yeah. I mean, I was back on the line anyway, but yeah. I just, I just stood there, and, uh, but yeah. And then I went back in the same thing. Guys knew I didn't have my helmet, of course, when I came out. I with would baseball. never have given you up, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Well, well, you're a good dude, man. Oops, when he gave me right up. He... No, no, I want that yeah. bullshit. Some mama bitch. Come on. How have we friend 40 years and I would give you up? That's, That's not good. Some um, um, mama bitch. Right, you, so didn't give him, you didn't give him up when you were clapping erasers or whatever with that teacher when we were sitting on the. 
seventh grade. Seventh grade, I didn't give him up when he was spitting on the parents outside clapping in races in Catholic school. Didn't give him up, bro. Mr. Klein. That's yeah. Of it. He caught you. All right, so Kev. Yeah. Yes, sir. 108. Yeah. What makes you what what goes off in your head that says I got I want to go to rescue one? A uh, couple of things that happened. I was watching rescue two and I wanted to go to rescue two. Um and uh Rescue 2 was bumping heads a lot sometimes, not all the time. Some of it gets exaggerated, but some of the engines and trucks. And uh, it kind of bothered me a little bit because the guys in Rescue 2 were awesome. The guys in Run 20 were awesome. The guys in 176 are awesome. They're 227 awesome. So why are they bumping heads, you know? Mm -hmm. So I kind of wasn't sure what to do. Not that they would have taken me yet anyway. I didn't have enough time. So uh, I was working on the side with a guy named Danny Killerin, mm -hmm. uh, a 124 truck guy. And his uncle, uh, I'm sorry, Mike Killerin, I worked with on the side. His uncle, Dan Killerin, worked in Rescue One. And he was telling me about it, you know. I was delivering lumber, driving uh, lumber trucks. Uh, I always had side jobs with other firemen. In 227, Lieutenant uh, Frank Heller. Worked with my dad in the Bronx, how intertwined it is. Oh, shit. So it my dad was a lieutenant, and he was from 42 Truck. And we were in the same house. Um, and then he became a lieutenant 227. And um, Jim McKenna was 332 captain. And the two of them owned a uh, lawn sprinkler business together. So I worked with uh, Chris King. I worked with um, Chris King. Richardson worked there. Yeah. Oh, Tommy we Richardson, were, right? Yeah. Us, but we were digging lawn sprinklers together, you know? <laughs> for Captain Kenner and Frank Keller. So then um, when I went to 108, at that same time, I, I moved from where I lived in Hicksville, where Ray is. I had to move out east. Couldn't afford a house in um, Nassau County, you know. So my first house was out east in Suffolk. And this guy was delivering lumber out there for an 84 lumber yard. Uh, my killer. Patty, Patty Lee said 84 lumber. <laughs> yeah. 84 lumber. And, uh, so again, how things uh, are tied together, um, Pete Gancy and Mike Killerin were partners in lumber trucks and some real estate too. I so didn't know that. Yeah. I knew Gancy. We used to commute to work together a couple of times when he was a, a BC cover and he was in the 3 5 battalion because we'd be working on the side, banging nails at one of his rental places or delivering lumber I was doing. And we drive to work together after that. He had a diesel Chevette. I never saw one before. Diesel Chevette. Yeah, he had one. <laughs> Hilarious. You can't see. So, yeah, um, uh, I, I was with these guys, and they were talking about Rescue One, and I met Danny, uh, and I, I was really intrigued with it. So I got myself for – I got an interview. I went and, you know, begged for an interview. Um, and uh, then they <laughs> – I jumped the list. So you want to hear how I jumped the list? This is oh, but of course. <laughs> yeah. I've never, I've never, I've never done this at the time. Dude, Dude another underhanded move, right? <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the junior guy now on a list. I figure I got, oh, I should be called in about 20 years. And uh, I only had six years on the job. And they decided that you had to do a hazmat detail where you couldn't go to the rescue. Hmm. Well, all these guys with 10 years in the trucks that were, you know, salty guys and you can't make me do that shit you know i'll go <laughs> Boom. I mean, hazmat. how bad do you want it yeah, yeah. all i did in hazmat was Kev, you, must you must have wanted it really bad you must have wanted it really bad bro <laughs> i did and that proves it right yeah man that's how i got to rescue one i think capital flyer just took me to teach the other people a lesson <laughs> that was it We'll get right. you in rescue one, man. Wow. Whoa, what are you got a little mullet going on there, bro? What is that? <laughs> you had the mullet. You did have the mullet, bro. It's all business in the front and a party in the party back, in the right? Back, there. Bro, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love the stash though. That is some real porn stash right there. Yeah, man. Is, chicken, wow, wow. <laughs> awesome, man. Back in the day. <laughs> funny stuff. Hey, huh? Looks like Dudley totally Do Right. Oh, oh! Oh, now you can thank me for that right now. For all the Alkies in the uh, in the chat, there you go. 
<laughs> you guys up. So, so that's you go to, with six that's years on the job, you go to rescue one. That's pretty crazy, yes. man. Yeah, yeah. Right, so let me the, backtrack. Uh, what was let the me backtrack for you? <laughs> Time I'm, out. I'm sorry. Let me backtrack sorry, a little bit. That? So 239 yeah. to 227 yeah. to 108 yeah. to rescue one in yeah. six years. Holy crap. <laughs> Holy crap. How to be a drug and alcohol problem. <laughs> <laughs> just kept moving me around. I guess I picked the wrong time to stop sniffing glue. Oh man, so I, I did it. <laughs> I, I got a question. What what was the cultural shift like between uh all the other places you worked and then when you got to R1? It, it was it was a, a cultural shift. And, and uh, for culture, the happiest, now looking back on it, was 227. Um, single engine is a very tight house. Everybody in every company was great. But, uh, you know, um, the rescue's got a lot of type A personalities. They're very aggressive. Right. And sometimes uh, real aggressive people, which I like, uh, I enjoy that part of it, can also get very competitive. Mm. And I, I don't care for that myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it, it, it's wonderful, guys. I, I, that's a hard question because it sounds like there was something I didn't like. Um, it no, just might. I mean, you're just, you're yeah. just explaining the the differences. I mean, it seems yeah. like every tier one unit is very aggressive and competitive in the sense that everyone's always trying to be the the top dog, the alpha. And you don't yes. seem like that kind of a guy. No, I like the work. I wanted to work very badly. Mm. Um, but the alpha stuff, hey, man, we all have a good day. I all have a bad day. Mm. So alpha today, you know, lose it tomorrow. You don't know. We talk about that later in some of those rescues. Like, you can't plan to always look like it's going to be great. You, 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 you would like to think you could. You got to drill, drill, drill. You don't know the outcome, you know. So a little bit of. Humility is the wrong word. I don't know how to say it. No, humility it is the best exactly. man I ever met. They were the most competent men I ever met. And they had no other, you had to have no other part time job. You had no hobbies. I had no hobbies. All that hunting stuff we talked about, Lou, I didn't take up hunting until after I was 40. Mm. Uh, the fire department was my life. The teaching those other jobs, teaching at Suffolk County, teaching for the state oh, while I was in Whiskey One. You were living it and breathing it. So it, it, it becomes very one-dimensional. You know, it's good because mm -hmm. you can't rise to the best that you are unless you're that one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my fondest times with guys – and it, I don't know, too. It could be that when you're at your newest and in probie and – Yeah, right. No doubt. Vision, like different goggles you're looking through. Mm. So I, I can't tell you. Like the, the biggest thing from the engine to the truck that I liked was – um Think of yourself. You're making some decisions. Mm -hmm. So you're as aggressive as you feel you're capable of being. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the outside, you got the roof. Well, the faster I finish the roof, now I can drop down and help the OV. Like, you could do more and do more and do more and keep going. Right. So I enjoyed that about the truck very much. Mm -hmm. and, went wrong. and then the rescue, the, the rescue, I just loved it. You know, I, I loved the work. It was my favorite. The rescue yeah. was my favorite. But um, rescue one is they get every every type of run that you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th those guys have every type of emergency that you can imagine. I mean, just look what goes on in Manhattan all the time, every day. You know, today, <laughs> yesterday, yeah. the day before, it's sure. every day, nonstop. There's something going on in this in the city, quote unquote, Manhattan, yeah. every day, and you're the pinnacle, rescue, baby. Yeah. yeah. The challenge for me at rescue one, and like I said, you. You ain't talking to the sharpest tool in the shed right now. So you <laughs> probably could be interviewing other guys. But, um, <laughs> no, I didn't have – I wasn't getting the volume of fire of, of Rescue 2 or Rescue 3, right? Right, correct. I also had – so less less fires and more diversity of buildings. Well, you should be able to – there's no excuse why in Rescue 2 you can't master a brownstone and a row frame. And you should be able to walk through that building like you're in your own – like you get up at night to take a leak in your own house and know where the bathroom is because you're doing it and doing it and doing it. All the time, right? You get a call at the Museum of Natural History. You have no idea. 
a call for Guggenheim. You're like, all right, you know, yeah, like a, like a mouse. <laughs> like a it is what it is. So yeah. when you fire and you were at the seat of the fire, you're like, oh, thank God, I don't have to think about anything. Put the fire on. <laughs> this was a gift. Some of the buildings, and you know, downtown, people laugh like, ah, it doesn't get the fire load. Those are dangerous. No, man. those guys had some. Yeah, man. No doubt. The West Side, right where your where oh the firehouse was, there was yes. a lot of fires back in the eighties, nineties, right? Yes. I mean, those guys yes. were doing some work there. Yes, they were. Yes, first they were. to work. Yes. Yep. Your Absolutely. firehouse burnt down for God's sakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kev, let me ask you: like coming into Rescue One with yeah. guys like Hashagan, Hank Malay, and all of them, <laughs> what? How do you square that away? Like, what do you, how do you walk in there, man? Like, Keep your mouth shut, <laughs> head down. I'm just like, I'm still working on it. <laughs> still working on well, it. Well, you still go up to Hank and to uh, Paul. Please tell him I'm still begging forgiveness and I'm still working on getting my act with <laughs> If it's ever going to happen, but oh I promise them I am trying. No, I still I still talk yeah. to Handshake too on a semi regular basis. Yeah. As a rescue proby, them guys could have done so much better, but nobody went to hazmat. Whatever it takes, right, bro? Whatever it takes yeah, to get every, there. That's right. <laughs> well, in, in jujitsu, we always say your ego is not your amigo, right? That's how you get uh, your arm snapped. That's how you mm. get choked unconscious. And yeah. it seems like you kind of live that sort of, you know, that humility, you know, worked for you not against you no yeah no uh well we all come from different backgrounds i saw uh i, I guess i was like a black cloud i had incidents at loco involved in a rescue a couple of fatalities as a lineman wow. and, and so uh I, I think i was coming with a different point of view than a lot of probies you know i think that was it so a couple of tragedies while i was working just wrong place at the wrong time and so uh, I, had a, 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 I took a lot, everything heart attack serious, you know, like that at fire. Yeah. Yep. You know, that, and, uh, actually, actually working hard for a living. Like, when, you know, when I worked for Con Ed, first, first I was a, yeah. just a laborer. And all I would do is just break concrete and dig holes. Oh, so, yeah. when they, so when they used to tell you, hey, you got to go out and build BI, I'd be like, yeah. Okay. You know what? This is so hard. <laughs> thank you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I swore when I became a fireman. I'm, you know what? I have to change my own muffler when it's busted. I'm underneath my car. I learn my brakes. I do everything myself. Didn't pay nobody for anything. But landscaping, I ain't picking up another shovel. I like <laughs> <laughs> All I do, I get the engine. I get the truck. I fight tooth and nail to the only freaking company that's got shovels and jackhammers. Because I'm a moron. <laughs> right back to the jackhammer. Right back to the jackhammer, bro. The yeah. healthy oh, system. And then one time I had to keep my mouth shut, which I tried to learn. They're going to try and teach me how to use a jackhammer at rescue. I'm like, dude, I know I don't do anything. <laughs> I know that, baby. Dude, yeah. No part of it. Try to do it in the middle of February when the snot is frozen to your face and you oh, sit there. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I don't think I should even say this, but I'm retired. You guys can't fire me, right? No, get out. Like, okay, so back in the day, me and another guy in Loco uh, going from Woodbury to Cold Spring Harbor, long road, Woodbury Road, and they were using a trenching machine, right? So the trenching machine, you had to score it with the jackhammers. I'm talking miles, it's like 15, 20 miles. I spent my whole summer with uh, steel-toed boots on and then these overlay of metal things you could clamp on your boots back yep. in the 70s. Yeah, I remember those. And, the, and the jackhammer had a, um, a macadam blade, a, a flat blade, not a point, to score the uh, <laughs> right, right, right. blackout, right? Because the trenching machine, when it came down the road, you didn't want to rip the blacktop into the road. You want to stay in the trench. So me and another brain surgeon are about this far apart from each other facing each other for four months. We had headphones like yours on, Kevin. They were the big ones that had a radio back in the day because it was not even a Sony Walkman. It would have been high tech. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. 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 I don't know how many miles, you know. 
Yeah, man, man, man. Now, yeah. now, all that's behind me. I'm a big deal. Yeah. Fine, and they're gonna teach me how to use a jackhammer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Hey, yeah, Kev, man. I wanted yeah. to just let you know, Till Tilly Geidel. Oh, Tilly, uh, yes, yes. My father was uh, Gary worked with you in Rescue One. Yes, <clears> yes. <throat> she's in the chat. Oh, please say hello. I don't know if it's the mom or the daughter. They're both Tilly. Yeah. Uh, wonderful women. Yeah, Gary. Uh, we we, we uh, lost Gary um, on 9-11. Mm. Uh, Gary was my partner when I got hurt. Uh, and uh, just luck of the draw that Gary uh, uh, didn't fall with me. Mm. And uh, I was so lucky the way I fell. I didn't get killed, just luck. I'm supposed to say it's rescue expertise, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I ended that way. I did a back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, when I fell... I'll tell you a story later. You said you wanted to hear that later, yeah. but um, Gary just missed. He got a handful of my coat, but he just missed my Scott strap. And if he had gotten my Scott strap, he wouldn't have let go. And we both would have fallen. Fell right in. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, you know, just the uh, grace of God, I didn't get killed just because of the way I landed. Had Gary come with me, we both probably would have passed away. But uh, wow. wonderful friend and brother, Gary. Yeah. What yeah, I worked, with, I worked with him a handful of times. I didn't know. Him. Oh, you worked with Gary. Okay. I, did yeah. not, I didn't know him that closely, but I, I did work with him a few times. Um, yeah. So what, what came first, the uh, the roof rope or the uh, the trade center? So we'll push roof, off into one of those. Roof oh, the, the, the rope, the trade center was uh, – I stayed for a long time, like duty, and had some other physicians, but the trade center was the end of my career, really. All right. So, so let's get rope. right into the roof rope. Let's get into that one. So – we got a we got a video too. We got a video, but you know what? I, I want to talk to you. I want to ask you. Um, I mean, you train for this. You we repack the rope once a week, right? We train for it. Yes. With the thought that is this ever really going to happen, bro? I mean, even when you go to a sock company, what are the odds that you're going to be involved in a in a life rope rescue? No. It, no. <laughs> it's slim, right? It's yeah. I owe this one to Michael Higgins because in 108, we drilled on that rope all the time. So in 108, when the officer was too busy to take you out to drill because he had paperwork, maybe he had some fires earlier, Michael always took it upon himself to drill us. So weather was decent. We'd take the aerial. Yeah, we were a rear mount with a straight stick. We'd go out outside. Um, the officer could be in his office. He's right there. You know, they'd practice uh, – Putting the aerial up, we had Union Avenue and Broadway was 108, so we had an L. Mm -hmm. uh, just putting the aerial up in different positions, L could be in the way, whatever. Um, and bad weather, the roof rope was a classic, right down the pole, over and over and over. Yep. Do it blindfolded, literally. Blindfolded. Yeah, we would blindfold the same. I, I was just going to say the same thing. I used to blindfold the guys and make them do it blindfolded so they, you know just a muscle memory of doing it blindfolded <clears throat> we did that every scenario the glove getting caught in the line you know yes. you know your hand getting caught in the web you know just non-stop drilling with that like you said right <clears throat> but, but when you're drilling on it you're like am i ever going to really do this Is but you this only need one time to execute one right time. i mean yeah. one, one time time. when yeah. seventy thousand people are looking out at you from below so with it's 700 seven, cameras. Set it up for us, Kev. Like you're working. It's a day tour and rescue one. Yeah, it was. I can't remember the date of the week. I think it was a Tuesday. If you're still in touch with Hank and um, Paul, mm -hmm. you could ask them. Because what we did in rescue one, and it was a great drill, is we went around the rig and uh, you checked each compartment. And that day, you know, it was scheduled Monday through Saturday. Sunday, we redid the stuff that you missed during the week. And um, that day, that compartment was what you drilled on, you know, whatever mm -hmm. was in. So um, uh, I think it was a Tuesday because it was the day we were repacking the roof ropes. And the rescue carried two ropes. The trucks carried one, right? So um, we had two roof ropes. And <clears throat> that day, I believe I had two guys. I knew Kevin Dowdell from Rescue 2 was working with us. And Patty Barr, I hadn't met. Uh, he was on over. I think he was on overtime. One of them was on overtime. One was detailed. Uh, and um, I'm saying hello to Patty Barr. I never met him in the kitchen because we used to repack the. Uh, I did re repack the roof rope on the kitchen floor because it was tile. Mm -hmm. Cleaner, you know, yeah, cleaner. Yep. Totally no abrasion. You know, nothing to the rope. And Run came in, 
and I got the roof ropes all over the floor, just starting to repack it. So we'd leave it behind because you had two roof ropes, you know. And uh, For that reason. Yeah. So we, we we went out the door. We went to something I don't remember what it was. And then this job came in uh, as we were respond as we were going back to quarters from the other job. And uh, long story short, we, uh, we we pull up and you know. The engine's got its assignment. The truck has its assignment. And the chief meets us in the street and just says, uh, rescue, go get that guy. I look up, and there's the first victim that we rescued uh, standing. What did you have? You had the roof that day? No, I had the, I had the irons. Okay. I had the irons, yeah. So uh, Kevin and I were inside team. Kevin Dowdell and myself were both mm -hmm. Kevin inside team. And three Patricks were on the roof. That's funny, huh? Yeah. And um, we got to remember this was it was it was May, but it was hot. It was a hot day, and uh, you got all your gear, pull up boots, and there's no bunk of gear yet. And uh, it was a twelve-story building, but it was like loft construction. And some of the uh, stories were more than one right floor. regular floor, right? Yeah. And it had an exterior fire stair, you know. So uh, you went into a um, basically an enclosed staircase, and the engine and, and you know, from what I remember, is the same as always. First engine's taking the elevator, second engine's throwing their roll ups into the elevator with the first engine, and then it can take their you know their hose with them and then kick it out when they get on the floor. So the first engine's up with its line, the second engine's line's waiting for them, you know. But I know we're not getting in the elevator. We got to take the stairs. And um, we hoofed it up 12 stories, which was really probably, I don't know, 14 or 15 stories. And right away, had to force a door, Kevin and I, where Patty Brown, um, Patty Barr, and Patty O'Keefe all went to the roof. It was a top floor job. And uh, we had seen the guy from the street standing in the window. And um, you, you don't know. We don't even know if the guy's still there or if he jumped or. I have no idea. So we get a, a commercial outward opening door. Now mm. it, it's hot and you just went up 12 floors and you got to bust your ass on the door. Now I got the engine is, is now there with us. They're behind us waiting to go in. Just as we're forcing the door, just as I'm bringing that iron down and we had to take turns, Kevin and I hitting it with the ax. It was a tough door. Mm. Just as I'm getting that door open, and it was thick smoke. It was right there. Uh, we get a not an, not a mayday. We get an urgent for man power on the roof. Now you should never hear a mayday. Hopefully in your career and urgent's handful times. You know, urgent. I need man power on the roof immediately. Urgent. He says repeats it twice. Uh, Patty Brown. Oh, I'm like, sure. Who was that? Patty Brown. Patty Brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think only rescue only rescues on the roof at the moment. So we're the only truck slash rescue up there. Um, now, there was another way up, and I didn't take it. That's where the trucks had gone. And uh, when I hear urgent, you know, this is fast. You're not thinking. But just as that door is open, I've made up my mind. I'm going up to the urgent. And Kevin Dowdell says, I'm going to try and get the guy. So Kevin goes in. To try uh, and I got you. I got you. Follow the line in. Whatever. And the guy was towards this corner. So it was not a bad move on Kevin's part. Right, it was a good move, but for me, I had been to a top floor fire once before, and a guy stepped through the roof. His leg went down like Chinese fingers; he couldn't pull his leg out. Like, fuck! So I'm right to the roof because I don't know. You don't know what you're going to see, but I'm nervous. Do you think that like I'm thinking about what I'm doing? I just ran up all them stairs, just forced that door. So I think there's pictures of me taking my coat off, taking my taking everything off. Because I was done before I got to the roof, you know. Mm. You need that break. It was my physical, uh, my maximum. And uh, you're overheated. You're lightheaded. So, you know, uh, I stumble right into the middle of a roof rope rescue. I'm like, damn. <laughs> How did this go again? <laughs> I was just doing this on the kitchen floor. <laughs> yeah, I was just doing it. So, so you know what? Before we show the video of you doing yeah. your end of the bargain, yeah. can you bring us to, to the to the point where Patty Barr 
drops and and tell us yes, what that looked yes. like? So that's what I walked into the middle of. I walked into the middle of it. They weren't even done putting Patty Bar into the you know the double loops and the half hitch around your chest, right? And uh, Patty O'Keefe did not have a, um, a harness. Arnold. Some of us were issued harnesses. Some of us were not. So all there was was the belt around the bag. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's still the same, right? It yep. was the ladder belt around the bag. Yep. And uh, I had the harness. So I took the rope out of his hand, uh, made some loops on my harness. But then you'll see me looking for a substantial object. So the um, the place had a penthouse, but it really – these terms we throw around, but like you know, Manhattan's Manhattan, right? It doesn't fit in a box. So is it a penthouse or is it a 13th floor? Mm. Well, that was an alleyway all the way around the roof, and it had a masonry wall. The penthouse was really like another story, but it was just smaller than the 12th, the 13th floor. So I had a masonry wall. I can't get through to the wall. I look at it. There was a small air conditioning unit that must have been added later, like just a, uh, air conditioning one apartment, whatever, or one office. I kick it. It just falls right over. I'm like, well, I got no object. There's no time like the old chop through the roof. I yeah, right, right, right. It's happening. And I don't know where the fire is. It's a top floor fire. I'm not chopping through the roof. I could lose my spot on the roof if I vent it, right? Right. And this is all too fast. At the same time this is happening, Patty Barr, who I still to this day admire what he did, that tough guy, that's a tough guy, he hung himself over the roof, not tied to anybody, because there's a video somewhere out there. It shows me running back and forth looking what to tie off to. He's already over the roof. Well, there's no other buddy, you know, but the guy he's tied to, that's me. So Patty Barr hung himself over the roof with his arms on the parapet wall, dangling his legs to give that guy the courage not to jump. Wow. That's a good wow. man. Yeah, that's a good man. Wow. So uh, that's what men do right there, bro. What's that? <laughs> that's what men do right there. <laughs> Dude, that's a tough guy. Big bald yeah. men. <laughs> so uh, Patty Brown said, We have no more time. And I could hear the guy, and he's yelling, and he's he's praying in Spanish. <laughs> so this guy's going to freaking jump, you know? I only seen one guy jump before in front of me, and wasn't much different. Praying, whatever, whoop, out he went. Yeah. So, so we got to go now. So I just sat down, and put my feet up against the parapet wall. Uh, I, you know, fear goes through your head. I was afraid the parapet wall would push out. I've yeah. seen old <clears> parapet <throat> walls. are not in the best condition in Brooklyn, but no, there's no problem it, he goes, and I got the weight, and, uh, and Bruce Newberry got there. And, and uh, I, Patty O'Keefe first is laying across me, and I think it was Bruce was next showed up, laid across him. Because when Patty Barr gets the guy, and I'll tell you the way he got him, uh, you'll see that rope goes down. It drops. Well, that rope is static. That's not a dynamic rope. That's mm -hmm. me on the other end going up towards the parapet edge. Then those other guys pull me back down. So that was a concerning moment. <laughs> that was <good. laughs> what, what I heard the most and why you can't predict how this is all going to go was um, Patty Barr is a much stronger man than me. And Jose Gallegos jumped at him. He didn't even get time to do a good rap on him. Jumped and Patty Barr caught him. And you'll wow. see Jose's head slipping down. And Patty's got him, but he's also got him. With his legs. His legs, right. He's trying to hang on to him just because. Yes. And when you see the rope spinning and Patty's trying to get their attention and then he has to let go with one hand to break the window, that's a strong guy. Hell yeah, man. I suppose <laughs> I was the first rescuer. Patty <clears throat> Barr, and the guy was a heavy hitter, a heavy guy. I don't, you know, you do your best, but what are you going to do? You know? Yeah. So that's, that it worked out well. Yeah. We were lucky. Lucky day. So, so you brought us right to the point where this video starts with Patty Barr, guys. So, let me. Um, is it cool if I play the video now, dudes? Yeah, do it. Play it. It's a few minutes. It's about three or four minutes. You're going to see Patty uh, wave to the First. crowd after he gets him in, and then Kevin's going to go over. So, we'll watch okay. that and then we'll come back. And it's narrated. Here we go. As soon as they brought him inside the building, everybody was cheering. He even waved. 
farm and wave, you know, and just to show that, you know, hey, you know, New York's all right. You were happy for two seconds, and then you knew you had to get right back to work. Because there was another man on 48th Street side. Kevin now took Firefighter Barr's position and hooked himself into the rope. Firefighter Ray McCormick was with another ladder company. A fireman handed me the rope and asked me if I knew how to do this. There is a certain amount of trust that firemen have with each other, but this was an extremely critical situation. There was no time for lies. And I said to him, yes, I do know how to do it. And that was no bull. He was giving the orders to lower, and I watched the rope go through my hands, and the rope was already frayed. And that, like, sh sent a shiver through my body that the rope was already frayed. Street were uh, unbelievable. You could hear them. 13 flights up. It just kept getting louder and louder. We had done it. And uh, it was just very gratifying and uh, it was just a special moment for me. Never forget it. Never forget it. Dude, wow. what you don't what you don't see is I watched that that video was online. I, I found that online. About ten minutes later, there's fire coming out of pretty much all of those windows on the top floor. So you know, you see that one little spot where Kevin goes down. It, it definitely looked like Kev because I've watched it now a few times. It looked like you went. To, you said I wanted to ask you what you said to that guy. Like, don't effing jump on me. <laughs> You know, like take your time. We're gonna, you know, you're gonna be all right. Like, what did you tell him? Like, chill out, or we could. I, I started telling that. You see that he was getting on me. Yeah, yeah. Control, but then all of a sudden he, he gets on quick. Uh, I could see the fire coming uh, to the top of the door behind. No him. shit. Yeah, you could. Yeah. yeah. So the reason that that place was so difficult uh, and why Kevin had trouble because I thought Kevin had a shot at grabbing the guy. But that was a recording studio, and uh, apparently, I, I'm not familiar with that industry. But they all, all the musicians would rent uh, like a small cubicle, 
And those offices were tiny. And uh, like back in the day in a computer room, you know, the, the floors were raised and all the cables were underneath, right? Mm -hmm. so they had a floor like that. And then what they did was they'd have a recording studio in the middle. And then she had all these little cubicles all the way around and the recording studio in the middle. And they would take turns like on a schedule, you know, Monday, 10 o'clock, the recording studio is yours. So each one of these little cubicles had people that were singing and had a keyboard or had a drum set in soundproof rooms. And then they would go into the, the main part uh, to rent their space to record something or whatever. So that's why the smoke was so tough there. And uh, that's why it was such a maze, you know. Mm. Yeah. I, this has to be one of the most iconic <clears throat> photos, you know, of FDNY history. I mean, just to see you with a T-shirt, looks like a pair of jeans and some boots on a <laughs> rope with this guy. Yeah. You know, you know, it was pretty sketchy too. Kev, which, again, like I've watched this a few times. You know, when we started doing this more uh, technically, right, with with the squads and sock and all that stuff with the rescue. Yes. You you never take out it. You know, you get jammed up. You never take out a knife. You never take anything sharp because right. there's so much weight on there, right? So much tension. And then when the guys are taking the glass, like right next to you, yeah, to try and I just almost cringe. Like, you know, like you just see a couple of shards, that last spot where now I get it. The guy's trying to get yeah. you, you know, pushed over. But <laughs> it's uh, there's a couple of big pieces that come flying past you. Like, yeah. did you think about yeah. that too at any time? Or like you, you weren't know, really it wasn't, it wasn't uh, how do I say it? that part was not as dangerous as it seems. The way the camera angle gets it looks like the glass is almost above us. That yeah. guy was at my level when he broke the glass, was going right down below me. Oh, is that right? All right. Yeah. yeah. It does yes. look like it's pretty that close to you. Right. All yeah, right. It looked worse than it was. Yeah. Do you, uh, yeah. do you still keep in contact with that guy, Kev? Or? No. Um, the other fella I do, uh, you know, I, I get it. Believe me. To each his own. He, he, his name was Peter Lewis, a really nice, uh, nice gentleman. He preferred not to get involved in any news he did it for a while when they kept asking him right they hounded us for a while it was really awkward and he mm. really wanted no part of it and i even told him you don't have to do this for me you don't want to do this stuff anymore don't do it and i never heard from him again mm. but i hear from the other guy jose gallegos uh the musician he stays in touch <coughs> that's yeah. pretty cool did you yeah, guys uh did you guys win a uh, gordon bennett for this no 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 um uh i got the bonner medal uh, huge boner uh, yeah both um myself and uh patty bar got class ones for that but i think there were four or five class ones that year no wow. shit yes tough, a tough year to do a roof over yeah. <laughs> you look guys at how, young, uh, how young you guys were there huh look at Dowdell uh, and mccormick and 100 years ago <clears throat> o'keefe right right i know i'm gonna hear it there's the horses in the background right my buddy <laughs> <laughs> you still got the mullet working I still got the mullet there, bro, working it. Yeah, man. Awesome. Patty Brown. Huh? Was, uh, and real you real. know, funny, they, they, you see us, right? And and you think, wow, whatever, how difficult or how heroic. There was a lot going on in that fire. A captain gave a mayday, got off the line, couldn't find his way. Really? That fire was a disaster. It came out well. That's I was going to say, but with a good result, though, right? I mean. Yeah, but it. it, it yeah, about four things were really, you know, those two guys on the rope and then um, two other guys inside, two firemen, came real close. But, uh, sometimes, I, I guess I have an odd sense of humor. You just look at life. But I took that guy, and just as I got that guy in the window, they started giving a mayday. So a mayday, I think it was Captain Canty, was, uh, off the line, and they can't find him. He's giving a mayday, hmm. disoriented. <laughs> I take this poor guy, Peter Lewis. We just rescued him. I'm like, yeah, you'll be fine. I shove him down. He sits down. And you're going upstairs to get your gear to go. <laughs> no, another fireman was there and hurt himself. So I took his coat and helmet. Well, he tries to go. I, I'm wearing the other dude's coat and helmet, try and make a move for it. The other guy leaves too. We just rescued this guy and left him there. Imagine if he's all days and just walked out the window. <laughs> Like I said, man, hero to his hero in a blink of an eye. Yeah, man. <laughs> you just I asked you something, Lou. 
if I were to drop that dude in front of everybody, you think 30 years later people would want me on a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I would be the world's just... biggest murderer. Well, let's just say this. Thank God it's <laughs> Thank God it didn't happen that way. One. Yeah. Two, on, honestly, that has to be because of, like you said, the, the stars lined up, right? Yeah. It was a real rescue, real deal. And the fact that you had all the mil the, the media down there, mm. like you said, nowadays there's a fire. To, it's on apps and it's everywhere, right? Back in yeah. back then and in the early 90s, you know, nobody had a camera already. at the ready, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that they got – now that was happening – you know, when I got on, I got a 93. That seemed to be happening. Roof rope rescues were happening quite a bit, mostly Harlem or, yes. you know, yes. right? So there was always a few guys doing roof rope rescues. And now it doesn't happen too often. There was a few just in Harlem just recently, again, where the guys did a nice job in uh, a yes. couple other places. That, that young kid. In the Bronx, 30, yeah. 28, 30, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. But, um, good, good. But the fact that you had that, I mean – and the, and the reason why everybody knows the FDNY, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying and when I talk to you about it, but that was one of the top rescues, you know, say what you want, man. That was one of the top rescues ever to have it on film and then have it documented so many times and talked about how many movies have a similar scenario because it was so dramatic, right? Yeah. And the fact that you guys pulled it off and not the way it's supposed to be done, right? You adapted, you overcame, you figured it out. And really, that's really what firemen do, right? It's not always by the textbook. Well, and, we're not uh, there for us. We're there for the people. Yeah. And, and, it, and, it, and it didn't drop them. And, it didn't <laughs> drop them. <laughs> and then luckily I retired. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, they do right. God it's bless it. them. Hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Question. There's, a question. There's a question coming in from the chat from Gabe Fox, and he's asking, is it true that Captain Brown was disciplined for using the rope twice, or is that urban legend? What do you mean? What does that mean? You're not supposed to use what's no, the other no, way of course. two men on the What are you going to do? Use. You have no choice unless right. somebody else brought a rope up. There, there was a, how do I say it? Um, there, there was some uh, controversy after that rescue. Uh, Patty was a, a lieutenant then. And um, uh, we had, we heard some, some scuttlebutt. Yeah. Flatter. We, there were chiefs that had issues with things. I was out of uniform. <laughs> I wasn't wearing my coat. Oh, I'm sorry if I make it inconvenient for you that I'm not wearing prepackaged yeah. body bag if I fall 12 stories and you have to pick me up. I'm sorry. You know, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Turn out coat. And like I said, I didn't discard the coat just to be cavalier or be, a, you know, whatever. I, I was overheated. I was yeah. shot from the stairs, from the door. Forced Forced the door. The door. Right? Yeah, man. I was done, and I had to keep going. Uh, so I was maxed out, you know. Um, well, one thing that was kind of funny was I didn't have a, <laughs> I didn't have a rescue one shirt on. I had a one away truck shirt. I on. was just gonna say <laughs> that to you. <laughs> <laughs> you probably got a lot of shit for that. Just gonna one. say so, that to you, bro. Oh, I didn't get anything from that. What I got no. was a rescue one shirt within a day or two, and I got assigned to the company. I was still detailed. Wow. Really? Oh yeah. So they're like, That's well, crazy. you're not. Uh, you know, you're not really a member yet. All right, I wear my one away truck shirt if I'm not wearing a rescue one shirt. Right on. Boom, I was on the detail. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Hello, he's a son. <laughs> how was how was Shatner when you did when you guys recreated that thing? Was he cool or was he a penis? I never met him. No, no, he, that was oh, he, yeah, he, he wasn't there. Yeah, no, yeah was they like, probably just set that up separate, Lou. You know what I mean? Like uh, it just cut him in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was a penis. He should have showed up. Uh, you know who was a nice guy? Uh, Walsh. Uh, was it John Walsh? Oh, yeah, yeah, America's yeah. Most Wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah I worked yeah. with him. I worked he with him a bunch. He's a great guy. Oh, he was. He was. You worked with him, Pete. He was a good guy, and that's a tragic story about him losing his boy. Oh uh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, when he says he's really worried about first responders and this and that, he, he meant it because unfortunately, from the stuff we met a lot of media people. Most of them I wouldn't associate with again, mm -hmm. but there were a couple that stood out, and he was one mm -hmm. of them. He's a good man. That's it's really funny you cool. should mention that, Kev, because I don't uh, want to associate with any media people ever again either. Really? 
Pete, hey, you know? uh, we're lucky that we still associate with you because you're a media person. But... I'm no longer a mainstream <laughs> media person at all. Come on, now man. you're a pandemic. No, but, Come on, I, man. I, I, I've worked on a lot of America's Most Wanted, and uh, I traveled yeah. the country for that show. And I got to tell on, you, man. that guy is that guy's awesome. You know, yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> and some of the cameramen were were exceptional, and they My were feet. a couple of them were uh, freelancing war correspondents. Wow, they really they had some stories. Yes. That's yeah. cool. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Cheers, man. So let me ask what you this: so, oh, so you make this huge rescue, right? I gave me goosebumps. I got to be honest. I, I, I really it makes me proud to be with the FDNY because of, of all of those things, right? Every time somebody does a great job, I see it now. Because There's we a do this here and clap it. You're like, oh ah, my god! To get up and go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, sir, are a bad ass. That's all yeah. I could say. Well, this is what I want to ask. Speaking of ass, I mean, how much was, was it getting thrown at you? Was the pooty getting thrown at you? You know, after oh, you made the, that, you know, what happened after that? that? You know, you, you go out to the bar after work, like I think. Uh, I <laughs> think you and he's like, "What was happening?" I think he had some pussy falling out of his pockets. Like, oh, what's that? <laughs> oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't told you that's mine. Pooty, please. Well, I told you what happens. A cop makes a daring rescue or a daring whatever, shoot somebody or everything, and he's the hero. Women everywhere. I get buffs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I Can you sign this, Mr. Stang? Uh, Just the one time I realized I should have been a cop. You That's get terrible. <laughs> You get the four hundred pound sweaty guy with one tooth in his mouth, and he's like, oh, um, just, oh, oh. "Can I have uh, <laughs> no booty, huh? That sucks. Really? That was unbelievable. No, no, no. You know what I mean? Ruffy said he was going to work that in. He did a fine job oh, right there. Working that was very nice. I wanted to that out of my memory. Yeah, you that really are. Really you really are a Dudley Do Right. Uh, <laughs> Ray, I hate you for that. <laughs> wow. He so, did, and he did you, the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, don't you stop. I mean, we got to prop the guy. I mean, didn't we have this? Uh, that is wrong. And he did the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. How many shirts did you sign? Oh, Mr. Shay, can you sign my shirt? Where's my, where's my nipples? Can you sign all my nipples? <laughs> you know, I, I, guys would tease you for that and, you know, play jokes and make believe they were somebody else who call, like, to set you up. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I had something happen to me when I worked at the utility company. I worked for Loco. I wanted to be a fireman. I could taste it. I wanted it bad. I scored 100 and 100 on the tests. I was in the first class, but there was some controversy. Um, I think women or something held the test up before me in court. So it cost me three years on the job. I was still uh, luck. Thank God I had a job with the lineman, but three years. I would have been hired in, 20, in 81 when I was 21, but it took till 84. So I'm in a bar because at night you couldn't get anything to eat um, when you're working overtime at Loco, like you guys at Con Ed. So you find a bar that served dinner. There you go, you know, to get something to eat at night on overtime. And um, we're still working. And I'm in this bar. I was in Amityville, Long Island. And a uh, fireman walks in. He sits down, like, next to me. And uh, he's got a T-shirt on, just coming from work. And I, I remember trying to strike a conversation with him. I said, oh, yeah, you know, my dad's on the job. He's like, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I really want to be a fireman. He's like, yeah, so's everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he walked in. I was like, "What a douchebag!" What a you know? yeah. douche! That guy's a douche. Yeah, a big time. Douche. Capital D. I love that word. That's my one of my favorite words. Douche. It, it, it struck me so much that to this day, if I'm at FDIC or a conference and somebody wants to stop and talk, even if I think I'm being set up for a joke and going to embarrass me, I'm going to do it. I'm going to stay and talk to the guy. And it comes from that that night, that that day. I never really? forgot it. Because the guy's a douche. The douche. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> that is wrong. He did the wrong, wrong thing. The wrong did thing. The wrong thing. <laughs> I don't think that we have a, a finer guy, a nicer gentleman on ever than Kevin Shea right here, bro. How's that? <laughs> he is a nice guy. You set your side nice flow, brother. Well, <laughs> well, you know, not only so you know that was that was one big story, the roof rope rescue, obviously, but then you have another one for us too. Um, Oh, yeah. we're gonna get into that one where they uh, 
you know, the uh, Abidads tried to take down the uh, tower the first time, right, bro? You're One working? Day you are, next day a rescuee. I prefer a rescuer. <laughs> you do. Uh, I so you're working, I, I believe Henry Molay was the chauffeur. You had Timmy Kelly working with you. Who else was on the rig that day? Yes, Gary. Gary was my I doubt. Yep. Uh, Jack McAllister. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's another fellow? One more oh, guy. I, I, I can't remember. Jimmy Smith, was it? I, he didn't stay in the rest of the I think that was his name. A nice guy. Hmm. Um, I didn't work with him much. Uh, yeah, that was the crew. And uh, um, Pete, you had said something earlier about it's what you know that can get you. Not yeah, you it's know. not what you don't know that'll get you. It's what you do know that'll get you. Well, it almost got me that day. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, <laughs> get it. Get a call for a transformer fire at the trade center, and as we're responding, it turns into a transformer explosion at the trade center. Right. So we're signed on the box, um, and uh, I mean we were goofing around. Right? But, I think Timmy and I were throwing snowballs at each other because you could go up through the the skylight on the rescue and take scrape snow off the roof if you were uh, <laughs> nice. You know, I know one rescue expert, right? Rescue professional. <laughs> <laughs> snow off the top, or, <clears throat> trying to get out to throw it on the windshield. Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. So we get there, and somewhere in the response, it's starting to sound a little more serious, and then they give the ten seventy five. And what happens is when we're assigned on the backs, we didn't get in uh, before the first two companies, but we got in before the second do. So they transmit a second alarm, but we're already on the road. So we beat the second two companies in from what I remember. You know, you actually, uh, some of the stuff, my memory is not the clearest on it. I think that um, uh, it, Hank might be better but to ask, you know, some of the other guys because uh, – a little bit foggy later on in the story, but um, some of it I remember like was yesterday, some I don't really recall. But uh, going to transformer explosion, big building, big transformer, right? And that's all mm -hmm. you think. Uh, we go into the Vista Hotel, it was between the two towers, yeah. I remember that hotel, married yeah. at 9 11 time, right? Well, it was yep. Vista when we were there, and um, just so, vibe, just the whole time, the vibe, something was wrong. But you couldn't put your finger on it. I couldn't anyway. And um, people were panicking, but you know, they panic all the time. They didn't pay much attention to that. Explosion, but transformers, uh, you would know, Kevin, like I do. Them babies, if, if they're in series wrong or whatever happens, they blow. They can blow, right? Mm -hmm. so I'm familiar with that. That was my area before I was a fireman. Very mm -hmm. comfortable around the utilities. And that's why I still like to trench rescue or confined space because I – that was my life before I was a fireman. It's comfortable for me. And um, the uh, fire watch guy, you know, uh, I'd left this post. Then he came back, which they always stay there, right? They usually retired firemen or cops that have that. Yeah, name. right. They are. So right. This guy came off. And then he came back. He's yelling something out downstairs. People trapped downstairs or something downstairs. And he runs away again. I'm like, oh, what's going on here, you know? But they're kind of crowd control. Um, you're not putting together yet that there's a catastrophe of any sort because you can't see anything. There's no broken glass, no broken – that we pass, nothing. So we go down the stairs into an office area, I remember. And, you know, uh, a finished floor, I call it like polished concrete. I'll put down an epoxy or something on the floor. Right, right, to seal it. Yep. I was in the office. And uh, it had those cubicles, you know, them hamster cubicles where it's like a metal – um, halfway up and then a window on the other half so you can mm -hmm. see the other person but from waist height down was solid right uh no broken windows but there's a smell and there's like a haze it's just a haze no not banked down no smoke and the haze is a transformer kevin i'm getting a lou i'm getting that oil i'm mm. getting the petroleum product the oil like in the transformers and I'm getting the insulation from the cables. The lovely PCB smells that comes from a transformer. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm still like it's, it's what you know, right? Yep. All right. I got a transformer call. Something's out of the order, but I'm getting the transformer. All the senses are going. It's still a transformer. And this is important for newer guys, if, if anybody's listening. Um, when you think you know, and, and you're supposed to be taking all this input in, 
to help you decide what to do. That's being a fireman, right? So my smoke, everything's telling me still transformer in my mind. So uh, we split up and uh, uh, Jack McAllister went one direction with the other guys. And um, I'm in a different area and something's wrong. Now I know something's wrong. Everybody split and left everything the way it was. <coughs> and there is a, a safe and the safe is open. It didn't look like cash. I think they call them bearer bonds or something. Yeah, bearer bonds or something, yeah. Dude, there's a lot more money in a fireman account laying all over the place. And really? the dude didn't even kick the safe closed. So you learn when you work in a bad neighborhood, you walk into a bodega and there's nobody behind the counter. Whoop, back, back, yeah. up. That guy don't <clears throat> that guy just the place is getting robbed. Something's going on, right? And this was quick. I didn't have time to really talk about it, think about it. But I remember saying that somebody left the safe open and I'm seeing all this stuff around. Like some, these people bailed, right? I'm like, mm. I don't know. And then at the same time, that's going through my head. Uh, Lieutenant McAllister called. I uh, said, I got a guy, I got where I got, I got him or I got somebody over here, over here. So he's in a men's room, like a locker room, bathroom combination. I think it was. I saw the locker room part. Now, first time I'm seeing something weird. There's a hole in a, a masonry wall, like a cinder block wall. And he's kind of in it, but the other firemen from Rescue One are between me and him. I can't see over them. The lockers are tipped over on the side in a row, them lockers aren't just sitting there. They're bolted to the ground, right? Wow. The mirrors are not broken, no broken glass. You're like, what's going on? Nothing to say an explosion, but nothing to say this is just a transformer fire, which I was ignoring that. I'm saying it's still a transformer fire. Maybe they all bailed out at once and knocked So them. even up to this point, you're still thinking that's exactly what you you still have. A it was transformer. The technician that told me uh, what I had broke and told me it was a bombing in the hospital. I had no idea. I never knew it was a bombing. So i tell you, it's funny. It doesn't matter from my point of view, but it's funny how it never stopped clicking. So um, he says, I can't get him. Find another way. I don't even know what he's talking about. I just got a victim somewhere. All right, you know. So we about face. Now I'm in, in the lead. Because I'd follow these guys when they called for help, and I was last in. Now I'm in the lead. Ah, I got you. And I got Gary right behind me. I find a door. And, and there's no, it's not lights out. Like I said, it was a haze from what I remember. Mm -hmm. Open the door, it's banked down to the floor. Boom. Well, here we go, right? So uh, I, I'd say, Gary, it's banked down. Gary shows up. I open the door. and like, anybody there? I'm yelling in the door. He could barely breathe it. And uh, I hear somebody yelling for help. I'm like, well, we got him. Let's go. So, uh I wasn't, I don't think I was wearing a cheater, but I wasn't wearing my face piece. I was taking breaths, you know? And uh, I had my face piece on. I put my face piece on. I usually had a cheater. Uh, lucky I didn't. Allegedly. A couple of things. Yeah, let, yeah whatever. That's right. <laughs> but, oh, side story, side note. Part of what saved my life. So I wore the old worst crap you could get. And sometimes you'd see like old pictures from the Bronx and the guy's stuff's all worn out. Well, sometimes you'd see that like, like that in Rescue One. Yeah, it looked like that. The volleys were throwing out better stuff than I wore. <laughs> Whoa, you want to ride wow. Yeah, you got a coat, you know? You got it. We were wearing all kinds of shit. I mean, it was good stuff. It wasn't mine, you know? So I had this old flimsy volley coat. I took the liner out because I could be more competitive with the trucks and the other rescue guys if I'm lighter, right? Used to strip all our stuff down. We were we were a safety disaster. Something <laughs> <laughs> we really was. I mean, between the, allegedly the cheater and the taking your liner out, you never wore half your shit. I mean, it was no. real. You had gloves that you you know you garden with for God's sake. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. They love the gloves. But it, it was winter. It was February. It was cold, <clears throat> and I was on overtime that day. I think it was a Friday. I was on overtime and. uh all my stuff was soaking wet. So what happens when you're soaking wet? You take your stuff off and you wear your friend's stuff, right? I do that. <laughs> so I did another job. In the engine. <laughs> it was Eric Wiener's stuff I was wearing. Eric from 111 had come. So you think it's funny because I wear his shit, get it all wet, and then he has to come into work the next day. But you never took your good stuff out of the locker because you had to wear that for inspection, right? Mm. Dude, it was like angels would sing. Ooh. 
<laughs> when you open up the locker and the glow comes down. I had two locker tests one. One was just for my gear to pass infection. So I got it out of probe school, bring it up in 227, had it brought to a guy, restriped, you know. Whoa, never touched that gear. That's my probe school shit, right? That's funny. All my other gear is wet. What am I going to do? Wear my good coat, right? Just try not to get it dirty, right? Don't want to get repaired. Our helmets were taken away from us. Well, they couldn't take it. I bought that helmet, right? We had the new helmets with the ratchet device on the back. I didn't want to wear that, so I used to not wear it. They say, hey, we're going to take your helmet away from you. Oh, you know, you can't take that helmet. You know, I bought it. Oh, Mr. Smarty. Okay, how about no mutuals? All right, all right, all right. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> outsmart the chief. You ain't. That's why he's the chief, right? That's it. Mutuals. So side note, I'm decked out in, you know, my Sunday best for firefighting, which I never wore. And uh, it helped save my life. Absolutely saved my life. Hmm. And I'll tell you why. So we get this guy now. Gary and I go out into the hallway. I got no change of uh, floor. Uh, Pete, you had said what you know. So I'm in the hallway, right? The door is a little bit wide, but not unusual. No change in elevation. No change from carpet to tile, tile to same floor. I'm in the office, right? Well, I'm not in the office. I'm on the ramp of a parking garage. But I don't know it, right? Hmm. So we're going down, we're going down. And uh, when you're searching quick, like you're on poured concrete. This is, God knows how thick it is, right? Rebar, you could see later in the pictures. I'm not checking the floor ahead of me. It's like walking in the street, you know? And to try and search faster and move along, you got a guy calling for help. I don't have the wall on my right, and Gary has the wall on his right. Gary's got the wall on his right. I got him on my right. So double up our width and keep moving, right? And sometimes, like, Gary would just take his tool and tap the wall. Now he's even further out to try and get more distance covered, right? Mm. So then we're getting close, and uh, I'm not feeling heat, but I see orange through the black. So I'm like, what's my man? Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help. Okay, we'll be right there. I lied to the guy. Put my thing. Hey, Gary, we can't reach this guy. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll coming. We'll be right there. Gary, there's no way. I think we need a hand line. Can't reach this guy, right? So as we try and get closer, next thing I know, I'm standing on a piece of concrete. Boom, it goes like that. The cantilever's down. You were standing? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, no, no. We're standing. We think we're in it. We think we're in the... B1 level of the World Trade Center. I'm not checking for right. No, I got you. Floor, you know. So we just stand him, and that floor can't leave it down. Concrete hung on the rebar, and we both started sliding. And uh, Gary somehow got a. He told me later he had gotten a piece of rebar across, and it stopped him with mm -hmm. his right hand. With his left hand, he tried to grab my shoulder. I got two pieces of, of rebar facing, you know, facing away. It first grabbed my distance and I flopped my body around. Now I'm holding them like two pencils. Oh, so you really did catch yourself. Oh, yeah. Well, that one of the first things that saved my life was when I fell, I hung for a moment and it straightened me out. Had, you know, right, right, right. You didn't go over head first, right? No, no. And uh, Gary's reaching and he's grabbing and he's missing my – thank God he missed my scotch strap and he got a handful of coat. But, you know, I'm skinny, Kevin, but I'm still almost 200 pounds and – with my stuff on, you can't hold me. I mean, you could you could hold me. You yeah. can't pull me up. That's not no. possible, you know. <clears throat> so, uh, and Gary was a strong man, but uh, he couldn't hold the coat. I, I slipped out. So all Gary's saying is when you hit the ground, run. When you hit the ground, run. I'm like, I know, I know. Because we both think I'm falling into the transformer pit and they're falling to the fire, right? Mm. So the pit's hold. Wow, he said what, hit the ground, hazmat. run, huh? Wow. Oh, yeah. What, what, what's your hazmat, right? One and a half times. The product, the dike is supposed to hold, right? I believe that's what it is. I don't remember. So usually you'd see the dike around the transformers. That has to hold one. That's supposed to hold, I think, one and a half times the fluid in the transformers. That uh, Back in the day, that's what they did. I don't know if that's correct right now. But uh, I think I'm falling into the transformer pit. Right. You know, I, I ain't going to burn to death, you know. Fuck that. I'm, I'm going to run out. I'm going to hit something. But I'm not, you know, I'm preparing the, to hit the ground and run. It just run in any direction. Hit the wall, hit whatever. Get out of the get out of the pit right uh, hold on as long as you can and you can't hold rebar on your gloves like that nobody's strong enough it's too thin it's it's not possible so then i go and i'm falling i'm falling and that orange ball goes whoop right past me i'm looking Ooh. up 
was, this happens in a couple of seconds. I look up, I fell four and a half stories. You know? Wow. Uh, Shit. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was it. Good God, man. So, yeah, I hit a, a piece of uh, concrete on an angle like this, you know, and I hit with my feet and then my knees and chest and then my head and face. So um, that dispersed the blow. I broke my right ankle, uh, broke my left knee, impaled the bar through my leg, broke my nose, fractured my skull, knocked the tooth out, um, and did some internal stuff, you know? So uh, um, I still thought it was a transformer fire. And I remember when I hit, I, I thought at first uh, I was impaled because uh, I remember trying to get up. I can't feel anything. You know, you ever get hit hard, like real hard? I don't know, football hit or Yeah, like you know, you're shocked. You get whacked, right? When yeah. you first get whacked, like, you know it's going to hurt, but it don't hurt yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in mean, that, like, Oh, You're this waiting for the hurt. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get up. And I look to my left, I look to my right, and I see rebar sticking out out of the ground. And all of a sudden I get up, I'm like, oh my God. You I'm know? stuck. I'm, I'm I'm impaled. Oh my God. Yeah, that was the worst part of the whole thing. I'm taking my hands and I'm going like this. I'm going down or down my stomach to my waist and going around. And uh, it was my Scott pack. My Scott pack was stayed on my back. And that's why I still am a believer in Scott. I, 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 I would rep that product to tell somebody Scott's the way to go no matter what. A freaking thing took that ride, smashed on my back. The, the harness broke. The cylinder's up behind my head. The high pressure hose held. And wow. I put it together, but I didn't need it because the smoke banked up about 10, 12 feet. I was going to say, you said you were out of the smoke, huh? You weren't in. And yeah, no. no, no smoke. I had about. Uh, I could see pretty clearly. I was going to say, could you see? How, how was the visibility when you fell? Uh, at my level and maybe six feet higher, you know, I was laid out. I couldn't stand, but about six feet high, I could see horizontally. <laughs> almost no problem. I couldn't see up at all. Right. And, uh, I tried to put the Scott back together because I thought I would need it, but my face was busted up. I couldn't I couldn't wear the face piece, but it still worked. I still had air if I, if I had to force it on. Right. Um, I did, had, you, uh, did you call right away? Did you did you ever oh, radio? Yeah. yeah, I would like to get this call as a boss. Mayday, mayday, rescue on. I fell. I don't know where I am. Both my legs are broken and I'm surrounded by fire. Wow. Oh my yeah. God. Shit. Who, who was I the feel boss? Like I should have apologized who was the boss? My career, you know. Yeah. Cam, who was the boss of Rescue One? Spanky McGallister, Jack McGallister. Wow. Yeah, how's that for a mayday? Yeah, that's a pucker factor. That? That's a pucker. a pucker right there, bro. Yeah, and then uh, so what happened was there was I was told later there was over two hundred cars on fire underground, and I still thought it was a, some kind of transform explosion because when you're in the middle of it, you can't see how big it is at all, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, remember, like. Uh, I, I, I couldn't tell you all the products. The, the kids would have rims on their cars. Some, uh, this is the early 90s, so the late 80s is when their cars were from. Um, certain uh, parts in the uh, motor, magnesium or whatever they were, they burned white hot. Yeah, white yep. magnesium, and yep. I still thought it was the transformer part. Wow. You know, like that zzz bang, that zzz bang. Well, it was, and it was other noises. And every once in a while, talk about when guys say, ah, I was never scared. Oh, my God, you're out of your mind. You're not in control. You're, you're not scared when you're in control. When, you, when you're out of control, you're, you're at the whim of the winds, whatever happens. And yeah, man. Every once in a while, you would hear like a whistle sound, and one of them cars would fall out of the rebar. Zoom, bam. Wow. And the cars falling out of the sky. So, you know. Uh, the heroes there were the guys that came and got me, you know. And uh, did you, you know, have any, did you have any idea how far you fell at that point? Or I had no idea anything. You know, my head was busted. I didn't know. No. So, so uh, I, we have a guy in the chat saying, and this is uh, his name in the chat is Chameleon Two Seventy Seven. So I don't know who this is, but he's saying Ladder One Seventy Six responded to the WTC. Uh, BC Adamo ordered us to the location where Kevin was. 
we yeah. still thought it was the Transformer. Lieutenant McDonald yeah. from Ladder 176 turned to us and said, this was a bomb. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I, I I appreciate that. That man's spot on. I don't know who it is, but tell him. I, can you tell him I said hello? And uh, you just did, sir. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So uh, Tony Adamo it was the captain of 176 before he got to Manhattan. We used to call him Tough Tony. Uh, it was a good man, you know. Uh, I, you know that was such a disaster. And looking back on it now, I I don't envy anybody. The poor officer I had. So, <laughs> I mean, what did you, you saw the rebar, right? The rebar sticking out like the uh, tongues of a rake. I can't send the guy right away on the rope because I'm telling you, it's fire all over and I can't move. There's a high possibility I'm finished. You don't know that, that I'm going to be dead, right? So, yeah, I mean, a brother would always come, but look at that. So now you put a guy over on a roof rope. How do you bring him back? Yep. Yeah, right. Plus, now, you don't know what you're going down into, right? You don't yeah, even know what you're going had, down into. We were starting out of Roco stuff and you know, Spec Resco stuff I teach was still fairly new then. All well, the mechanical advantage, they could have got that stuff, but how long to deploy it down mm -hmm. here? Gary, I told him, almost bent a, a portable ladder by himself because it came down the stairs. It couldn't make it through the stair through the door. He almost bent that whole ladder trying to get it through. So Who was the first guy you remember seeing? The first guy I saw was John Fox. Fox did come down right there on a rope, but it took um, it took a while. I was told it was almost an hour. I don't know if it was that long or not. I have no idea. But I know that by the time John Fox came, all the smoke was gone. It was lifted. Where was and he from, Fox? Squad. Okay. He was officer in squad that day. Um, and uh, you really, you know, looking back on it, you really couldn't send a guy down on the rope until you could see. Mm. But everybody was trying to get to me from every other direction. I heard Gary put himself through hell trying to get to me. Um, uh, John Ty from Rescue 4, two ESU cops, they all kind of converged simultaneously. But John reached me first. And so that shows you how long it took. I was going to say, that's a long time. I you really through to me because uh, – um, uh, John was probably in Brooklyn when I fell. That's how long it took. I was going to say, you, the fact that you were able to breathe, because if, if you had to stay on air, <laughs> that, that, you, that would have uh, been it. You know wait, what I mean? Uh, uh, that. Um, a lot of luck. Remember I said I had the right coat on? First, I had the right helmet. So I fractured my skull here and busted my nose. That was with the face piece. And the helmet took the ride down with me. So that was getting smashed against my face piece and helmet. If I had had my old helmet on, uh, it would not have taken that ride with me. It just it just wouldn't have. I wouldn't have had a helmet. That would have been it. The head would have, like an eggshell would have been done. Wow. Then I fall backwards, and I realize I'm not impaled with my chest, but my I got a bar through my leg. And that fire, I could have burned to death with two cents worth of fire because some of the gas tanks were letting go. So a small amount of fire, but when you're pinned against it, looks like an inferno right you can't go so i had to lift my leg you know whatever get get off that it was hard on uh unimpale myself i was gonna say did you want to buy yourself or, or they they they, they oh no, i had to move i had to move before they got there i would have burned holy shit. i only had some minor burns wow. on my back but that was because of the new coat where i would have been in trouble right then uh i met the guy that we was calling for help that i tried to get uh <laughs> didn't do too well there, but um, never, never got that guy. <laughs> I met him later, and he's the one that told me they were doing work on one of the kitchens. That guy must have been 100 kitchens, different types of commercial kitchens in that building. I don't know how many mm -hmm. um, that, in that tower. But um, when they get the uh, – like for a walk-in refrigerator, you get that uh, insulation that's got like the aluminum side on front and back surface that they make a walk-in refrigerator out of. Apparently that comes delivered or back then like sheetrock in bands of like 50, whatever sheets banded mm -hmm. together. Well, that was down there right next to me. And that gave me a smooth surface over a lot of the rubble because I was not able, like if I had to go over all kinds of debris and rubble, I don't think I could have dragged my body. So I just put my left leg on, on sideways on top of my right and just dragged, you know, oh, uh, to get away from the fire. And then another brainstorm of mine is like, 
I said, I ain't burning to death. I don't know what's going to happen, but that ain't it, right? <laughs> oh, it's running water. And I tried to get into that. If I pass out, at least I'm not going to burn to death. Who do you think crawls into raw sewage? This, <laughs> oh, this guy. Yeah, I'd rather guy. be in raw sewage than burn. Raw shank redemption right there. Covered in, covered in open wounds and sewer water. And nice. Things. And then, yeah. I, you know, wow. So many men were so hard to save me. And uh, how did they get you up out of there, bro? Uh, uh, I I, and and I should be. I hope I'm forgiven for this, but I can't remember everybody's name. I, I, I saw faces I remember, but I couldn't remember who they were. I remember telling one guy, "Man, I just I'm so cold. I'm just so cold. I was wet." And he took his turnout coat and, and put it over me. Wow. This is February. You know. Wow. And then, uh, but there's always humor. I'll give you two pieces of humor at the end of this. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> this job is awesome, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they kept me in Stoke somehow, and they're passing me through rubble, up up a level through rubble, up a level through rubble. And at one point, I'm being passed through debris. I'm I'm pretty much out of it, right? Like I said, I fractured my skull. You don't really know. You know a little, but. It, I don't know. You'd have to ask Hank or somebody else. I really couldn't tell you. But I remember being passed through some of the stuff and the backboard, the, the, the Stokes, the orange Stokes is on it. And my face is rubbing on the debris. That's how tight it was. With that wow. Pattern. Which means that's what these guys, I guess, crawled through. Crawled through, through, through to get to you, right? Fucking Incredible. Amazing, right? Wow. So <laughs> they get me out. And how would you like to be EMTs, EMS people, medics on a job when either they think a fireman's going to croak or a cop shot. You don't want to be on that call. No. You got either a thousand cops over your shoulder pushing you. Hurry up. Save that guy. Right, yeah, right, 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 right. Well, there's a picture of me getting loaded into the ambulance, all busted up. In the Covered in shit. <laughs> <laughs> don't you know, like I said, I'm skinny, but I'm long, tall, and skinny, dude. My busted leg is hanging over the Stokes, and somebody slammed the door on it. Oh, <laughs> oh God. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, it got hilarious, right? That's my one funny story. I thought that was funny, and I do not blame the EMTs for that. Some brother shoved the door, you know. Trying to, run, trying to rush it to the hospital, right? Back, you know? So I thought that was funny, looking back. And the other one was, remember I told you I was on overtime? Well, what happens when you're in overtime and you get hurt? That you, you only get paid to that point. When the medical officer sees you, right? Yeah. And the medical officer is patrolling. It's like a vampire patrolling <laughs> the hallway to hell. <laughs> and the minute he touches me, my overtime stops. Fractured skull, busted legs. Yeah, they're not going to pay you to the end of the tour. Sorry. I'm out of this. So the yeah, explosion yeah. was at like 1220, sometime around 3 o'clock. I ain't going to see that guy. Gary sends the guy to the wrong way. They move me. <laughs> they got me another half hour overtime. <laughs> no, no luck that day. How no rotten luck. could a guy be to know that his overtime stops? Doc, you ain't going to do the surgery. You couldn't have a cup of coffee for two or three hours, give me the rest yeah. of the tour? No, three o'clock it stopped. Damn it. How long yeah, yeah. in the hospital for? Only an idiot would think about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, this. we're firemen. You know what yeah. I mean? We're worried about the dollar. Yeah. How long? How long are you in the hospital for? Uh, not long. Uh, only a little over a week. Um, uh, I couldn't get any rest. I begged the doctor, and they sent a the nurse and some stuff home with me, and to get me out of the hospital. They had news crews come to the hospital. It was a horrible, horrible time. I mm. had a bad dream. It was terrible. So I had some surgeries then. And then it was a long haul in the hospital, home. Another surgery that summer, home. The third surgery, uh, medical leave, a year and a half with surgery. Oh, wow. Whoa. Back That's to light duty for six months. Another surgery, back on medical leave. It was a tough time. And uh, yeah, I remember some people that were just gems, though. Uh, stuff that sticks in your head. You don't know what's going to stick in your head. But, um, uh, Jimmy Boyle, 
came to see me one night. I don't know what time it is. I don't know what's going on. I don't know where I am. You know, nobody's in the hospital there, so it's got to be late. Uh, but I don't know. He says, you want anything? I says, yeah, Jimmy, I says, I don't know why. I, but my throat was burning. And I just had a craving. I says, can you get me like a, a, a malted somewhere? Is there, is, is there a, you know, gift shop open? Can you get me a, a vanilla malted something? Yeah, my, or, or ice cream. My throat's bothering me. He says, yeah. I said, I'll be right back. Uh, I fell asleep again. I wake up. The areas where the malt did. I don't know how far he went. Wow. <laughs> in the middle of the night, walks there. For all I know, the place was closed. But he got it. I mean, just people. That's funny. You remember these little things, right? I mean, yeah. That's <laughs> incredible, man. It came to my wedding then when I got remarried after that. Jimmy is just. So it's hard. One thing that's hard about the fire department, and it's all of us, we can't help it get a union guy or you get this or you get that and oh he's good oh he's no good he's good he's no good right and good guy bad guy talking about the guy's a saint you know they don't know and 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 yeah just things i remember like that people were really good to me well you you were saying that after you got <clears throat> i mean after you get uh you get hurt now you're on kind of like a light duty thing after oh, yeah. you know so yeah generally when guys get hurt you know it's it's always been kind of the tradition that you know, we take care of those guys, you know what I mean? Especially if they've yes. uh, taken care of the job. So uh, you, you okay to share this and uh, don't let me say, you know, I'll count on you not to let me say the wrong thing, you know, that line. Mm -hmm. I told you a little bit about the light duty promotion. That's acceptable, right? To say no. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So a lot of people uh, look up to Ray Downey as a chief and then as captain or as captain. captain. They think that's a hero, but. Um, God. Like the, the thing that really shows a hero to me is uh, um, he used to tease me after uh, the roof rope rescue. He's like, well, we'll never let you out of one now. You can't come to rescue two. He hmm. says, hang around. Maybe if you get promoted, I'll give you another look. But you ain't coming as a fireman. You, you, you're there. You know, he was laughing about it. He was, he was good. He had a good sense of humor. So I get hurt. I was scared to death I'd lose my job. I was too young. Kids were too young. The whole bit. I didn't know what I was going to do, right? And um, I was scared. I was really scared of my career. And so uh, uh, I got I got medical leave for a long time. Now, granted, some of it, I was still, I guess, that golden child, like that nonsense you were showing before. So it kind of stuck with me, but that only goes so far. Next thing you know, there's a medical uh sweep or what have you medical leave sweep and, and the guys are gone remember back in the day guys with bad hearing were lost guys with blood right, pressure right right i was i was terrified of that more than when i got hurt i was terrified of losing the job before i was ready so i remember uh harvey harold uh he passed away 9 11 worked with me in rescue one he called me to tell me i'd made the list on the tennis list about middle of the pack and so uh i was hoping you know to get promoted um but I never really got back to full duty. My legs never worked well enough, you know. So uh, Chief Downey, after a year and a half of medical leave, got me to SOC on light duty. And I was on SOC <clears throat> for about six months, did another surgery, and out another six months, then back to SOC on s s several months. I don't remember. You got to excuse me. I don't remember the exact timeline in this period. But then my, my number was coming up for promotion. So what they used to do was if you got hurt line of duty and if you're on the uh, list, they had to give you the promotion. It was city or union thing. I don't know what. But then you got retired the next day. You know, hmm. retired as a lieutenant, whatever, retired as captain. Well, you know, I had no overtime, you know, minimal and whatever. They got me promoted lieutenant and then made me full duty, but I could only work on the fireboats. So, uh, by the way, every once in a while, and Chief Downey got pissed at me, somebody on the overtime desk wouldn't know what the deal was. I get overtime. I'm, hey, you want to you want to tour and rescue one, rescue two? Hell yeah! You know? Oh my God! <laughs> you you pack up and go to rescue. Dude, oh that's, shit! That's I did this more than once. You know? Get, that's, bad. that's bad. Downey would hear this at home. Boom! If I have to tell you, <laughs> Chief, no Chief, just Chief. Back I went. Back to the boats. Right. Or another thing, another scam I tried, it didn't work. Uh, 
So you go to um, you go on medical leave for something on the boats. Well, you go to the medical office, right? Well, what do they say when you're back? You're not sick anymore. You're not hurt anymore. Full duty. Bam. Full duty. Downey intervened again. You're not full duty. You stay on that boat. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I probably was the worst lieutenant Marine 9 ever had. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anything about boats. What do I know, you know? Can we go fishing? That was it. Take the small rest of the boat for a drill. I was the scourge of striped bass. That I know. The rest, I don't I don't know. That's wonderful. And then um, uh, I got hurt on the boats. I, uh, uh, we had a small whaler to make rescues in uh, trying to, uh, I don't know if I was making a rescue or if I was drilling. I had two firemen assigned, and we had that thing wide open. It was a beautiful Boston whaler, 25-foot whaler. Um, nice. You know, yeah, well, it was pounding and pounding and pounding, and I got hit in the face by the uh, uh, tower that they had for the radios and all. Busted my face, had to get stitched up, and that was the end of my make believe. Yeah, your face looks pretty good for getting busted up so many times, bro. You're yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> up there before I got busted. Uh, but then, um, Chief Down again took care of me, uh, and I was LSS or LLS. And, uh, LSS, yeah. So you, your permit light duty, that's the end of it. Yep. And, uh, they got me to the EMS party academy, and I got a lot of overtime. And it boosted my pension up. And so um, I'm retired a long time. I told you I'm out since 98. And because of what Chief Downey did for me, I work on the side when I can teaching because I want to, because I love it, not because I have to. And if Chief Downey didn't do that for me, I don't know what I would have had to do. Yeah, that's just a few months ago over in Chicago. Nice. So, but, I love it. I, I just enjoy that. I you have that. your own training company now, right? What is it? Uh, Glacier yeah. Rescue Solutions? Glacier Rescue Solutions, yeah. So what do you teach? You teach all sorts of rescue. Uh, what, what do you got going on? Yeah, with give that? Well, I teach all what's, what's that? Are you okay to do that? Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. I know the owner. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the company that if Omar told me, I don't think you're up to this, I wouldn't have done it. You know, as I said, the senior man, he's out here with his wife Joyce on vacation. If he didn't say it was a good idea, I wouldn't have done it. You, you still need that approval, still need to be pet like a puppy dog, you know? Yeah, and and so that, tell us all about it. What do you do? Oh, I teach uh, mostly the tech rescue disciplines. So there used to be like six of them. Uh, right. I don't know if FDNY still categorizes them the same as like outside FDNY, different sometimes, but uh, it was six. It was rope, confined space, vehicle. They used to group uh, and then uh, trench, swift water, and structural building collapse with a six. And then they used to group, I don't know why, I guess somebody thought it was a similar tools, but it's not. The um, machinery rescue used to be grouped with um, vehicle, but now it's a standalone discipline. Mm -hmm. So the reason we teach that more than anything, the machine, you mean? what's that? Man in the machine? Something yeah, like machinery that. rescue. Yep. Man versus machine, you guys call it. Uh, yep. That used to be uh, part of, we used to teach along with vehicle, you know, hydraulic tools. Right, but right. It's much more involved, disassembling the machines. And right, that. Right. Mm -hmm. So now it's a standalone discipline. Yep. Um, I teach all seven of those. Um, I can't physically do all of them anymore, but uh, I have a it's a big pool, about 80 instructors I can call on. Wow, um, I used to work for Spec Rescue and uh, worked with them for over 10 years. And so I still have all those guys. None of these rescue companies um, can keep guys busy full time, that many. to keep mm. You swell up when you get the classes and you go down. Um, so by letting them, I encourage them to work for other companies. It keeps everybody sharp, you know. But the engine and truck, where my heart really is, you don't get calls for classes because basically anywhere in the country, I know you guys really FDNY, but I travel big cities, small, even rural. They can get firefighting um, training for free, which is great. So they're not going to hire somebody to come in and teach them what their academy can give them for free. Mm. Even if you might be better at it, that's not the point. The budget's not there for them, you know? Yeah, of course. But, yeah, the specialty rescues, a lot of academies um, – can't do that so that's what they would call us for i love when i get an engine truck class um we do things a little different 
try and teach them some truck company operations for uh, smaller staffing, which is good because it's easy to say what we would do, but nobody has our manpower. You know, we kill our manpower. He always says, we kill our manpower. Yeah, like my dad says, uh, he didn't say it when he's in the truck, but he went to the engine. He said, the engines just support services for the truck. I mean, the trucks just support services for the engine. <laughs> oh, what is the truck without the engine? Five more victims. That's what he said. <laughs> well, like we say all the time, how many guys can you get in the fire building with the squad? Five At least more. five more. <laughs> what, uh, hey, Kev, what's the, how can they get a hold of you if they want to? What's the uh, website? Hey, what's the website? Uh, gla uh, GlacierRescue.com. Pete, put it up there, kid. Okay. Yeah, I'll put, it, I'll put it on the, uh, I'll put it on the, the uh, bottom link there. Okay, help you out, kid. Enjoy it tremendously. I just want to make sure we're good to go. Uh, you had asked about volunteer work, Pete. Uh, um, not Pete, Lou. You asked about volunteer work. <clears throat> uh, I did when I first retired. I, I um, volunteered for hospice for a couple of years. But um, I really missed the fire service. And then 9-11, I just uh, would rather stay with what I know after you know being down mm -hmm. there like everybody. So I gave up the hospice for a while. So now for me, volunteer work is when you get the small departments with no budget. I just teach for free, you know, the local places. Nice. And then what I try and do is um, uh, confined space is the big one because OSHA requires it for industry. They got to have it even if they don't want. So I, have, I don't feel bad at all paying as many fine as I can from Exxon or Warehouse or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I got you. And yeah. Then when I'm out in um, Haver Fire Department or uh, local places here, I don't have to charge them, you know? You know I, I like it better that way. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I've been doing. So you're going basically across the country. You get to see a lot of different firemen, a lot of different firehouses, huh? Oh, yeah. I made that's some cool. great it's friends. 20 years he's doing that, cool. More than that. Yeah, a long time. I was I was teaching while I was still you know working, but um it really kicked in after I retired in uh, what's hmm. what ninety eight twenty something two years yeah man so you're yeah. doing that and you're killing animals good for you excellent yes, that, that yeah. part I like <laughs> well any hunters or fishermen out there why don't you start something. Amongst fine that want to hunt together, right? We already talked that. about that, right, Ruffy? We talked about coming out with a line for. We're gonna uh, do it. We're gonna figure yeah. it out. Yeah. I used to do some videos for fine engineering for that. You know, I don't think anybody watched them. They were terrible, but it was. I watched. I watched a few. Of you. you know what it is? Is you never had any. You gotta have the kill. You know what I mean? Like you guys were just walking around. It was, it was cool. Myself. I was always by myself with the cameras. So yeah, like, yeah, it's tough. Oh, look, there he is. I put the camera. <laughs> Damn. I well, watched. I just yeah. watched a few. The I watched a few the other day just to I get up the feet on you. The fireman hunting together was a blast. I, and if he's listening, Jimmy Daly told me he was going to listen tonight. He was. I saw him. I'm going to get you out here to hunt with me. <laughs> um. <laughs> I got a, a friend from Florida that's coming out to hunt, and uh, he does the wild boar too. I think. Uh, oh, the pigs are fun. God put them on the earth for bow hunters. Yeah, <laughs> I want to touch he goes, he goes with his sons. I think that's why they replicate so quickly. You know, he goes oh, yeah. with. I think he goes with his sons. But does he? Yeah. Yep. We're gonna get him on the show too. We're gonna man. we're gonna go. Uh, me and Kevin are gonna go hunting. I don't know if it's gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna try oh. and fit something in this year, but uh, we'll see. I don't going. Anybody that's still on? Uh, oh, we've been going. Is this too long for you guys? No, no, no. 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 Anybody still on? Uh, remember that non-residents, if you want to come hunt with me in Montana, you got to put in. It used to be March 15th. I think it's April 1st now. But watch your dates. All the times the guys get in touch with me, like. You know, July, August, hey, I'd like to hunt this year. I'm like, man, brother, it's too late. You can't get a tag. So anybody that's interested, please stay on top of March it. And tags, and then get in touch with me. You know? Sweet. Yeah. Coops, is it that time? Holy I man. I think it is, Pete. You know what time it is? No, it's what time, time is it? It's time for the old oh! school. <laughs> Look at his face. Of the day. Day. Love day. Love the drama. Guys are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, give it to us, kid. Come on. Okay. I'll give you one for engine work. And I'll give you one little one for truck. And I'll give you one for rescue real quick. All right. Hit it. Uh, for engine, as I'm traveling around now, I see a lot of guys doing all kinds of techniques to try and move the, the engine, the, I'm sorry, the nozzle forward faster. 
But a lot of the drilling is done out in park lots and stuff. I get it, how to hold a two and a half by yourself and all. But I really would like to see them drilling more inside because somebody somewhere was teaching or something, and you're probably going to get flack for this, about never get between the wall and the line like in a stairway or whatever because uh, you get trapped there or it's going to push you against it. I'm like, my God, that's exactly where you want to be, you know? I don't want to be on the railing side or on the open side of a stairway in a line. Somebody pulls at a line jerk. I don't want to be thrown against the railing. I don't know how strong that railing is and go down the stairwell, you know? Don't get on the outside of the line. Stay against the wall. Uh, that, that would be one for engine. I don't know if that, that makes any sense to you guys, but uh, truck, um, skinny guy like me, uh, I used to – the packs didn't have anything that would cinch your shoulder straps together. So sometimes my shoulder straps used to keep coming open. It was hard, especially right. if I was trying to go up an aerial with a saw, right? My, my shoulders are too skinny. So I always kept my waist strap open because if your waist strap is open, then the weight hangs down you know, on your shoulders better if you're skinny, right? Well, if you're not careful, sometimes I'd have the straps loose. I get off the aerial on 108, and if that weight was too far off my back, it could swing you right around the back of the aerial, you know? You could fall onto the roof or, God forbid, go around because of the way that you got the saw and the pack, and the pack's not tight to your back. It's a pendulum. It, it, it could get you. So, yeah, I'm big on the straps open so that the thing would sit, as they say, improperly to keep it from sliding off my shoulders. But getting off the aerial, get your stuff cinched tight before you get on the aerial going up. And then for the rescue – you got to practice your skills, especially the rope stuff. That's a perishable skill. You, you just, no matter who you are, you can't hold those skills if you don't do them all the time. It may sound corny, but all day long, whatever I'm doing around the house, I got a barn, small tractor, ATV with a winch, my rope stuff. I practice it all the time. A little bit of overkill, you know, lifting fishing kayaks up onto the, you know, up into the rafters of the barn with pulleys and systems. I do that just to stay sharp for the classes and even more important for you guys to stay sharp when you're working, uh, almost overcomplicated. I mean, the only claim to fame I have is I'm the only dude, only dad whose stuff didn't fall off the roof coming home from home Depot because <laughs> I knew it right now. <laughs> but anyway, you see what I'm getting at. You have to make it part of your daily routine or semi-daily routine. Do you need these skills? No, you don't need them. There's Velcro stuff and clips and clamps. Stay with your ropes, even if you don't need them. You know, use a clovich to because you can ratchet a clovich. You can't ratchet the other knots to tighten something up and then come around it and make it instead of using a ratchet strap. The more you do that, just the more proficient you are. Nothing beats doing something like that. Rope memory. That's I think all I got for you guys tonight. That's great. Good Incredible, job. man. Yeah. Hey. Woo! You know what, Kevin? The more I kill, the more I use my rope uh, skills. That's about the only thing. My four to oh, one, dude, my two to ones. Oh my god, I use that all the time. And, I picked uh, Ed from a class. I kept that, and I use that to drag my animals out. <laughs> <laughs> I might have, I might have acquired one of those. Yeah, the kids get that, and the grandkids can go down the. Snow. Yeah, yeah, they like that one, right? Yeah. I just use my rope knot for this right here. Look. <laughs> How to run a. There it is, right there, kid. That's Actually, when I, uh, no. just so you know, a little inside baseball here. That's when I ask a real stupid question. The bell gets rung. So, no, I've, 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 I, I've changed right. that around. This is only for the five, five, five bell now, bro. When we talk about a brother who's passed away. I changed it. I don't want to be for a stupid question. It's for serious matters now, Pete. Well, man, he's oh. been better. If he starts throwing stupid questions out all the time, then you might have we'll to change it back. In there. I might have to change it back. What? What did Pete say? Lieutenant Shay, I was so nervous to do this. You know, I was so oh, nervous. Oh, come on. Anyway. How do you it feel was, now? It was I really thank you guys very much for having me. Oh, uh, man, I, I appreciate it. And thank you because of you guys. I called Ray today. I saw Joey Higgins. I'm going to call Joe you know, tomorrow. And uh, this spurred me to do that. So thank you. Yeah, yeah cool, man. You. It was thank great. You, I, I learned a lot. I mean, again, I. I know right before this, we knew you. I know you. I've seen you, but, but we I don't really know you. know you. Right. Right. But now I feel like, I mean, just those two stories to have yeah, the inner, inner uh, workings of it. 
it uh, it means a lot, you know. So that's I'll cool. have you back too, bro. They're already asking for you to have you back in the chat here. Great. I don't know. You're gonna be best. I think you got it all, man. That's about it. Oh, yeah, but we can. No, no, we can no, have no. you on with Ray Sealy. We, we'll have you back on with Fat Daddy. You guys can go. Do a call to the bullpen. <laughs> you can have me on with any of those guys. I would. I would. I would be honored. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a hunting road show. Bro, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, man. Now you're talking. Now I'm talking a hunting road I would show. I'm so in. happy to do that. Yeah, would, I'll go anywhere. I hunt and fish anywhere in the face of the earth. We'll like do a uh, meat eater, you know? Uh, we'll do our and own then, version of meat eater. Uh, we'll do the kitchen table at the O'Shea's house, bro. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure his wife would after. love that. Yeah. <laughs> Twice a year. If guys are interested in getting together a fishing trip for halibut or something or salmon, yeah, man. Guys, I hate to dump tasks on your shoulders, but you guys are the conduit. Some guys want to hunt or fish together. Why don't we get it? We're going to do it. I'm telling you, we're going to make a show out of it. You get, yeah, how, many, how many bedrooms you got in there? <laughs> you know, he's got a barn for you, Coops. That's what oh, he's got. All right. I'll stay in the barn. I don't care. You get to no, sleep up in the kayak. No, no, you guys always joke, oh, I'll sleep. Is your wife in the room and all that? You guys do what you want in the house. Don't you go near my goats. <laughs> no, 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 I'm out of the goats. Men were men and goats were scared, right? That's yeah. right. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's another show right here. We're going out there. The uh, uh, Getting right. Salty road, Hunting Road Show. I love it. You guys are always great job, man. I appreciate it. Thank what do you, you got, sir. Ruffy? You got anything? Uh, I don't have anything. I have uh, a few shout outs, Holy but uh, I didn't uh, get them all set up, so I'll do those next week. I was so excited to get the show on the road today. So, uh, uh, look at you. All right, so I think Monday I'm working on a show with Chief Steve. We're going to be talking about uh, backdrafts, flashovers, rollovers, and cockloft explosions. You said That's cock. From Monday. I said cock. Uh, uh, and then a week from Monday, it's coming, the wife show. They're sending in their questions. Keep sending them in. Yeah, send them in. I only got about 10, so just get a couple more if you're interested. Yeah. Uh, do fair, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Milner, please. I'll kick you in a little. We had a week. Week. week <laughs> Come on. And uh, and Joe. 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 Nice. <laughs> look at that. He pulled that one out of his ass. I love it. it. Did you look at it? Did it talk to you? <laughs> That's the next one. It's coming. <laughs> awesome. All right, Petey, what do you got, kid? Right, Petey, take it out, kid. All right, ladies and gents, if you are in fact listening to this audio podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever fine audio podcasts are found, you should also be tuning in to youtube.com forward slash getting salty experience and taking your filthy digits and clicking the like, subscribe, and share button. That's Did right, it. because when you hit those buttons, guys like Mr. Kevin here will get out to you, all right, and with further frequency, all right? You're telling the YouTube algorithm you love us, and uh, they will keep putting this stuff out into the universe, which is what we are here to do. Also, hit us up. At Instagram, at Salty Dog Inc., where Mr. Refrano is posting amazing photos and giving you all the last minute up to the up to the second information on the show. And of course, guys, if you want to support the show, head on over to www.gettingsaltyapparel.com, where you guys can get the best firefighter accessories and apparel. So, uh, last but not least, hit us up with all your questions at the getting so actually getting salty experience at gmail.com. Uh, these are for our QA shows. And last but not least, guys, head on over to Facebook if you're still on there and go over to the getting salty fans page. We're over 7,000 on that. We don't run it, it's a fans page. It's uh, where a lot of memes are made, uh, of stuff. mostly of Mr. Lou Refrano there, but oh, I, I've been memed as well. My goodness. <laughs> I have to say, um, I don't laugh much about that stuff, but they got some funny shit on there. They got good yeah. stuff. But uh, anyhow, guys, that's everything, bros. And uh, Mr. Listen. Shea, Lieutenant, that was, I mean, not an incredible show, man. If you want to if you want to see the out. hunting and fishing show, email Louie and tell him you want to see the that, hunting and fishing show. That I'll show. take emails for. Yeah. That I will take emails for. I'm telling you now, we're going on the road to do a hunting don't and fishing show. Send me an email. Any shit, that I'll take the email for. Pete, you in? Oh, what are you kidding me? I'll bring my bow. I'll, I'll go shoot something or eat. I'll eat it at least. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I'm, no, good no, no. Till, I'm good. I'm good. I'll take care of you. I'll straighten it out. Don't there? You know, I'll take care. You know what, Pete? You guys go out hunting. Pete and I'll cook it at home. How's that, bro? Yeah, you, yeah. like yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> hey, listen, I I got all the gear, Louis. Don't don't don't. They got I'm not saying you don't. They it's got the fire Arrow, it's the Indian. Up. Remember that. Any firehouses out by you, there, Kev? What do you got? We can go buy one of those firehouses, buff out. Oh, here. Yeah. Wildland. Wildland's the name of the game here. Wildland. Uh, oh, we want to do a wildland show, bro. There yeah. you go. All right. Oh yeah. yeah. Wildland, right. hunting and fishing and drinking. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. All right, fellas. Oh, yeah. uh, Lieutenant O'Shea, thank you so much. Great show. Hang thank with you. us. Kevin, just hang with us, sir. Uh, sure. We're going to say goodbye to you after we get off. All right, fellas. Stay low and go. All right, Kev. Thank you very much. It was uh, it was an honor. Believe me. See you at the big one, everybody. Cheers, brothers.